Can you see it? Marco. Marco. All right. We are now live. What's up, everybody? We're back, and uh, we are here to have a discussion with a gentleman in the industry. It's not uh, too often that I get to do these, so I really appreciate our guests for joining us. Make sure y'all thumbs up the stream. Thumbs up the team. Click like on the video, and uh, I will let you go ahead and introduce yourself and uh, say who you are and, and what you do. Hey there, uh, my name is Febby. I am in the financial services industry and I was able to have a conversation with uh, with Marco recently. I like what he does, being, being able to follow his passion. Um, and he asked me would I be open having this conversation with him today and here we are. Awesome, okay, so do you maybe want to um, give some background on, I guess you didn't want to say the name of the company, right? So do you maybe want to give some background on uh, how you got into the industry, I guess we could say, and how long you've been in it and what your findings have been? Um, well, my company is Febby. I, I represent myself. And, um, but as far as background, I used to own a trucking company, a car rental company. I was doing really well. And I was introduced to this platform four years ago. And, you know, we're doing really well. Nice. Okay. So I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be, considerate of your request to not mention the name of the specific company that you are with, would it be okay with you if I say uh, the nature of the, like the industry that it's most closely associated with? Like, oh, uh, 100%. We could talk about, and I'm not here sure. representing a company, but we could, we could definitely talk about the industry. Got it. Okay. So you are in a multi-level marketing company that deals with insurance products. Is that fair to say? Uh, well, that's your take on it, but no, I'm in a direct sales company. Right. Okay. So tell me um, about, I guess that's a good place to start is maybe we can figure out what, uh, what you mean by that. Because to me, direct sales is this idea of a person selling something directly <clears throat> to another person. And mm -hmm. I, I believe that that is an obsolete, almost non-existent business model that would be near impossible for anyone to make a living off of because of the fact that we have Amazon, Walmart, Target. So what, what does direct sales mean to you? Direct sales mean I, I talk to my client, I educate them and I help them with whatever they're looking for and I get paid to do that. Okay. So, okay. So, I mean, it just, in my experience, I find that, uh, Folks in multi-level marketing companies will say, I'm not in a multi-level marketing company. I'm in a affiliate marketing company, direct sales company, uh, uh, network marketing. They'll have all these different terms for it, which I think these terms are sort of a deliberate concealment of the truth. I think that uh, direct sales is not what you do. I, I, I know I'm familiar with the company that you're in. Um, I've, I've talked about the company that you're in on my channel before. And I mean, people can look up your name and see exactly what company you're in. So it's, right. it's not a, it's not a huge mystery, but I, I would, I personally don't feel that what you do is direct sales. Well, I mean, it's, it's really not much about how you feel. I'm telling you, I, I get paid when I help a client. So, okay. You know how you feel about it. That's, that's up to you. I can't really change how you feel about it. Okay, so tell me what it means to help a client in your business. What do you do exactly? I do finance. Um, so if you're familiar with any, you know, financial services companies, I sit with the family, I educate them when it comes to finance, and whatever they're looking for, I'm able to help them with that. So if somebody wanted to buy an insurance policy, they could come see you? Correct. If they need insurance policies, anything that has to do with investments, and retirements as well. Awesome. Okay. And so when you sell one of those, you get paid a commission, I'm guessing. Correct. Okay. And is there any other way that you make money? I get paid when I help a family. Right. So when you sell a policy that might protect, uh, 
you know, uh, a family when, let's say, the father of the family dies, that would be helping the family, right? Correct. But is there any other way that you get paid? What do you mean by that? Like in your company, is the only way to get paid to sell financial products and services or is there other well, ways? We have five different ways that I get paid. I get paid personal income. That's me sitting with someone directly and help them. I get paid agency income by growing a huge agency. I also get paid bonuses. I get paid recurring income and you know a few other a few other ways that I get paid. Yes. Got it. Okay, so tell me about your journey in this business because you and I spoke uh, a few days ago on the phone. I, I actually called you because somebody had sent me an email um, saying that they had a meeting with you and they wanted me to look into uh, what it was that, that you did and, and look into you. And actually, actually, coincidentally, that same person commented on my channel and then right below or uh, right above or below their comment, I saw a comment from you on my channel, which... When I tried to click on, it was gone, and I don't know if it was deleted or what, but I was still able to see the um, see the notification of the comment in my like t history. Um, the person that had reached out to me, I, I think I don't want to I don't want to misquote them, so I want to see if I still have their uh, email to see exactly what it was that they 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 should be on here. I texted them to jump on right right before we got on. Okay, here, let me see. I, I, I think, here we go. Here it is. So they said, I'm not going to read exactly what they said, but they had, I'm looking here. Basically, it was the, uh, the, the email that I think you would send to somebody before they join with like sort of the different breakdown of costs. So was this a person that you had interviewed uh, to, to work with you as part of your agency and then they, um, they, they had brought up my video or what happened there? Um, they're with, a, well, they were with a company. Well, they're, they're with a company and um, I reached out. I wanted to share a platform with them and they saw what it is that we offer and you know, they, they actually liked it, but they wanted to do their own research before you know, being able to come on board and they went into your page, they saw a few videos, sent me the videos. And um, so I watched a couple of the videos and I was able to go over some of these videos with her. And she was like, I'd like for you guys to have a conversation. I said, sure, why not? And uh, she put my number in the bottom for you to reach out and here we are. Yeah, and I actually will say, I did call you the other day and uh, to ask you if you'd be interested in um, having this discussion. and. The way that that usually goes in my experience is when I try to talk to people in MLM companies is I'll ask them if they want to talk and they'll say like, okay, well, let me get an idea of what things you want to talk about. And I feel that this is usually like a sly way of them getting me to have the conversation prior to us having the conversation so they can mm -hmm. feel out how knowledgeable I am and then uh, have some excuse to not do it. But we talked for like an hour and uh, you are here today, so I, I do respect that. So what was it about my videos that uh, you agreed with, disagreed with? Was it the first time you had seen it? Tell me about that. Um, I don't agree or disagree with any of your videos. It's, it's more like a mutual stance. What I mean by that is you have a point. I do understand quite, you know, where you're coming from with a lot of these videos. I do understand where you, like, how you understand it. Um, but then again, we're still talking about MLM, I think, <laughs> um, which is, you know, it's, it's completely fine with, with our platform, we have, we have some characteristics from an MLM and we have characteristics from a direct sales as well. So whichever, if you enjoy direct sales or MLM, whichever, whichever makes more sense, uh, this is what we're about. But as far as like watching your videos and what part that I liked, I didn't like, I mean, if, if it's your stance and, and you know. Who am I to say you're wrong? Fair enough. So can you tell me then what do you, when you think of multi-level marketing, what does that mean to you? What is that? Well, we can actually use the actual definition of multi-level marketing. Sure. It's, you know, a company you get paid to recruit other people. Is that what that is? Well, is, isn't it? I'm asking you. You said that your company is not an MLM company. I well, believe for, that your company when, is. When I... When I talk to people from MLM companies, they get paid to recruit other people and they get to survive off of other people that they bring into business. And your company doesn't do that. You don't get paid to recruit people. 
I don't get paid to recruit people, no. So then how do you get paid agency income? Tell me about that, that reoccurring passive income. Tell me about how that works. When, when agents that I train, when they get paid, I get paid. Right. So when they make a sale, you get an override commission, right? Correct. Correct. Right. Okay, great. What about bonuses? The company pays me bonuses. It has nothing to do with the, with the uh, agents. What are the bonuses based on? What are the qualifications? Points as far as how, how much premium is submitted to a company. Points. Okay. Mm -hmm. And do your recruits sales count as points? Yes, because they're in my agency. And does the number of recruits you have count as points? No. The number of recruits you have doesn't count as points. And does no. your commission that you could earn for making sales independently, is that, can that go up or down depending on how many recruits you have in your team? Yes, of course. Okay. So there are incentives directly correlating to recruitment, even though you are not personally being paid directly to recruit, right? 100%. Right. So if that's not what multi-level marketing is, then what is multi-level marketing? Because from my understanding and on the FTC's website, when they have on their page about multi-level marketing and pyramid schemes, uh, an opportunity where you are simply being paid cut and dry to recruit is a pyramid scheme and a company mm -hmm. where you are not getting paid simply to recruit, but you are building a downline of independent, uh, sales representatives who you can earn from their sales, that's multi-level marketing. So from what I know, what you described to me about your platform is the definition of multi-level marketing. So what am I well, missing? I, then how, how would you say a direct sales company? How would that work? Direct your sales? Experience. Right. Well, again, I think, uh, like I said before, that direct sales is a basically obsolete business model. Uh, the stats show that multi-level... So, Go ahead. Are we saying... Are we saying everything is multi-level marketing? If that's what we're saying, then, you know, I guess we could agree on that. I definitely wouldn't say that everything is multi-level marketing. I was, I was trying to say that direct sales makes up less than 1% of annual retail sales in North America every year, meaning mm -hmm. less than 1% of all retail purchases are made by this method of you meet, sitting down with someone directly and selling to them. And yet, I, there are supposedly thousands of people just in your one company who are doing that. So I find that pretty amazing that less than 1% of retail sales, and yet there are thousands of people who claim to be making a handsome living off of that. To me, uh, that's an impossibility. The numbers prove that it's an impossibility. So uh, yeah, what your company I, is multi-level marketing, but I know you're going to push back and say everything is multi-level. So go ahead. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not pushing back at all. If that's your stance, that's, that's completely, that's completely fine. I used to, I used to run a trucking company with my trucking company. Um, I, I had to hire people to work for me. How do you, do you feel that that was, you know, that was, uh, multi-level as well, or do you feel like it was, it was direct sales? So you're talking about you being the owner or manager, operating manager, I, and then employees I, I below you. the company that my, my, my employees at the time. Sure. They get to do the job. I have employees that are doing the marketing, meaning these employees are reaching out to the clients. Mm -hmm. They would schedule time for me to, well, for my trucks to go out and pick up uh, whatever load that we have to pick up and things like that. So these people are making me money, okay, where I have to sit back and work um, on my business right. okay. instead of working in my business. Would you say that's, that's multi-level marketing as well? No, I wouldn't. Why, why wouldn't you? I'm curious. So in multi-level marketing, they are the definition of multi-level marketing they, is that it claims to be a system where you are recruiting people below you in a downline who also recruit mm -hmm. other people to make direct sales employee being an employee is not multi-level marketing would you say that in your trucking company those employees you hired were independent contractors or were they employees i had both and okay. those people get to they, they get incentive to hire to bring people for me to hire as well Okay. And are you, you are you currently in your company right now? Are you an employee? I'm not an employee. You're not an employee. So there no. is a difference then between what you do and a traditional uh, corporate structure, right? So this is what I'm trying to get I, to the I bottom guess you of. Get, how we get paid? Is that is that what you're saying? Like the way that we get paid 1099 in W2? Well, I'm just trying to rectify this puzzle we have here of is everything multi-level or not? I've mm -hmm. explained this before that you could look at anything 
any business model, any anything really. And most of the time you will find there is some sort of hierarchical structure that you could say has multiple levels and thus it is multi-level. I've heard every analogy you can think of. I have heard real estate used. I have heard Walmart used. I have heard families used. People, I've heard people say, your family is a pyramid. You have your grandma and your grandpa, then below that is your mom and your dad, and then your, you know, your uncle and your brother and your sister, and then you, and then uh, your children. So I've heard that, that everything is multi-level, but what I, and this sort of speaks to how there is this language game that goes on in MLM where they play with words to try to confuse people. And I think this is no different. Multi-level marketing, this business uh, opportunity that we are talking about is pitched as exactly that. It is an income, supposedly an unlimited income opportunity where you are your own independent business owner. Both of these statements that I've already said are not true. And well, let me, let me ask you this. Yeah. If, if the income is not unlimited, what, what would you say it's limited to? Well, there's simple math that we can do actually to show that the unlimited income opportunity is extremely limited, actually. Simple math. I mean, give, enlighten me. Sure, sure. So we already established that 1%, less than 1% of all retail sales in Canada and the US, North America, is direct sales, right? So okay. let's, we're, we're playing in that sandbox of less than 1% of annual retail sales, okay? That's, that's what we're... we're uh, trying to get a piece of the pie of here. Mm -hmm. And if you are doing, I mean, I know in your company, they call it agency. I wouldn't call mm -hmm. it an agency. I think that is also a term that is being used to hide the truth. I don't think a downline equates to an agency. Um, but if you were to recruit 10 people, I mean, when we first talked, you told me about how you did a 10, 10, 30. So you recruited mm -hmm. 10 people and sold 10 policies in 30 days. Well, if you did a 10, 10, 30, where you recruited 10, who recruited 10, who recruited 10, you could only continue that cycle a very finite amount of times. I think it's 12 times before you exceeded the entire population of the planet. And mind you, we're, we're trying to get a, you know, we're trying to steal market share, which equates to less than 1% of annual retail sales. So that, that is how it's limited, is that there's a limited amount of people you could have below you. And of course, there's a limited amount of, customers as well let me let me ask you this would you say uh because when i got on um and the uh thumbnail there was some a link there for people to donate yes. would you say you being on on youtube is unlimited income potential no it's not unlimited what is it limited to well as a youtuber of course i would want to grow my channel right but right. I don't expect that my channel is going to grow beyond 8 billion subscribers. There's a limit to the amount of people that could subscribe. And even less dra dramatically than that, there's a limit to the amount of people who are interested in this niche of MLM, which I talk about on my channel. So, you know, uh, th there's, of course, limits because there's not an unlimited amount of people on the planet. I, I see where you're going with this. OK, OK, I like it. Um, well, then I guess you can see when we talk about unlimited income potential, there's a limited amount of dollars. Is that what we, that, that could be some of the things that you're implying as well? There's a limited amount of dollars on the planet. There's a limited amount mm -hmm. of people. There's even more finitely a limited amount of people who want to buy what you're selling. Correct. That is correct. By unlimited income potential, they mean you put in the work, the amount of work you get, you, you put in, you get paid for that, that amount of work. I would think that's fair is that if you put in a certain amount of work that you get paid for that work, which is another reason Correct. why I don't like MLM is because most of their uh, people not only don't make money, they lose money. Well, I mean, if we're talking about an MLM, then I agree with you. <laughs> okay. So again, I, I sort of want to get clear on what you think an MLM is. If your company well, is not I, an MLM. I told you earlier, I'm direct sales. Here's the thing. If, right. if, if an agent of mine sits with a client, they help the client, they get paid. Okay. So, I mean, if they're getting paid, what money are they losing? How much do they lose to sit with the person? Repeat the question. How much money are they losing if they what? To sit with a person. Like you call a person, hey, this is how I can help. The, the things that we help families with, these are things that every family is looking for. Put that in perspective. Somebody spoke with, with my parents and I'm glad somebody did because my, my dad has been working for over 30 years. Okay, right now he's in a position that he will never, ever retire. 
Okay, I'm glad somebody actually reached out to my dad. They spoke to him, they helped him. Okay, now here's what I'm telling you. The person that reached out to my dad was able to help him. Do you think that person got paid? They help did because how? they did the work. They got paid to help my dad. And now they're in a position, my dad is in, in a one-one position. Now he can retire, okay? And he's able to have his own insurance, okay? And the person that helped him got paid. So is your dad also in the company? No, no, he's not. Okay, gotcha. So are people in your company, in your experience, when people are being prospected to recruit, are they being told up front what the actual job entails? Like, hey, you are going to, this is direct sales, which by the way, you said you get paid five ways. One of those mm -hmm. ways that you described was direct sales. So you can't really hide behind the explanation of saying what I do is direct sales because by your own words, only one fifth of what you do is direct sales. So I, I'm hoping well, that we can at least get on the same page about the fact that what you do well, is not direct sales and no, solely direct it's, sales. It's all direct sales because guess what? If somebody in my, in my agency doesn't sit with a person and help them, we don't get paid. So I don't get paid to have people under me. Does that make sense? Now, the, um, I, I know we were having a conversation on the phone recently and we we're talking about money that they lose. This is not a money that goes to any company. This is a money that goes to the state. So put that in perspective. With my trucking company, I had to get licensed with the state. Would you right. consider that money I lost? Not at all. Okay. So they have to do the same thing. So they get a license with the state. Yep. Okay. Yep. So how, how is it that they're losing money? So with insurance, real estate, uh, your trucking example, getting a driver's license, those are government licenses that you have to pay for, or, Correct. you know, state licenses Correct. or whatever. Every business has overhead. I wouldn't say to a guy opening up a pizza restaurant that the oven that he bought is him losing money or that he's losing money. That's an, that's an investment. It's his overhead. Why I say people lose money in MLM is because there is a deception going on where they are told, hey, ch this is an unlimited income potential that can change your life. It changed my life. I have a yacht. I have a Lamborghini. I go on these trips. I have this nice suit, this nice ring, this nice watch, etc., etc. And then they come into it only to find that the commission, at least in your company anyways, the starting commission is so miserably low for just making sales by your own pen that unless you recruit people, you can't get a higher commission. And you can actually just make a full-time income solely from recruiting people. You would never actually even have to sell anything uh, to an to a end customer, an end consumer, which is why I say it's... I mean, I'm being polite when I say it's multi-level marketing. What I, what I, the word I would use is a pyramid scheme. But hey, a pyramid scheme is totally it's it's illegal in the U.S. But that's fine. Like I said, it's your stance on well, it. Can you I can make, I ask you something? Does does something being what, illegal let me, let me mean it doesn't that exist? Quick. Let me address that. Well, quick. hold on. Before no. we go, okay, go on, go on. I'll hold on to that. I mean, if if it didn't exist, it wouldn't be illegal. Hold on. Say that again. If it did, if it didn't exist, it wouldn't be illegal. So so pyramid okay. schemes do exist. They, I mean, if it wouldn't be illegal if it didn't exist. Right. So explain to me how every MLM person I talk to says pyramid schemes are illegal. We are not a pyramid scheme. Am I just supposed because, to take their word on it? Because every pyramid scheme has said pyramid schemes are illegal. Well, no, not definitely. Why take their word on it? That that's that would be dumb. But let me exactly. ask you this. So am I not right. supposed to? No, one hundred percent not. I have a government license to be able to do what I do. What would, what would make you think the government would give someone a license to, to do something that is completely illegal in the US? So drunk driving is illegal too. But imagine I got pulled over for that, drunk does driving. Does the government on, give on, someone a license to, do, to, on, to, on. to go drive hold drunk? Hold on, hold on. Imagine I got pulled over for drunk driving and the police mm -hmm. officer said, I saw you swerving all over the road and I can smell alcohol on your breath and I see you're slurring your words. And I said to them, officer, I have a government issued driver's license that I paid for and drunk driving is illegal. There's no way I was drunk driving. Do you see no, how silly that, that sounds? That just no, because no, you have it doesn't compare business at all. owners, business owners have licenses. Does that mean that uh, they don't ever garnish wages or that they don't ever commit fraud yeah. for their for their businesses or they don't ever write bad checks? Having a license doesn't mean anything. It doesn't stop the potential right. for wrongdoing. You're right. Let's put that in perspective. So I have <laughs> I have a driver's license. Yeah. I don't drink. Okay. Now, you have a driver's license, you drink. What does a driver's license have to do with someone that is drinking? 
Well, that's your point. You're the one using. No, 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 no. My point is I got a license to do what I do in business. And that's exactly what I do with that license. For example, if you get a license to drive, you're driving because that's what the license is about. The license has nothing to do with whether you're drinking or not. Does that make sense? The point is, it actually doesn't make sense. And let me explain. Okay. The, the government license, the driver's license, you would agree is a government license, right? Correct. And it's meant for people to operate motor vehicles the responsible way, not drunk driving, right? That is correct. But just because someone has that license doesn't mean that they couldn't misuse it, right? That is, that is right, because right. the license and what they're misusing it for has nothing, it doesn't correlate. And if so, anything, they would tell you to not, drunk, to not drive drunk. When you go into like multiple, the bar, they will not even let you leave with a bottle, uh, open bottle. Okay, now let's put that in perspective. If this is a scam, let's, let's, say, let's say this is a scam, right? Why is it that they're terminating people for not doing the right thing? Why is it not just all about, about the money? Explain. If, if you use that license and you do something for a client that is not correct, okay, you, you let, literally get your license revoked. It could happen. That's absolutely true. It, it could happen. Now, this person is a scam. That doesn't necessarily mean the license that they have is to do things that are scamish. Now, why would, why not. would, why would not... top companies with great reputation in the industry partner with a, with a scam company? I mean, I, I, don't, I don't get that. So this is sort of the next thing. I, I don't really want to get off of the uh, licensing uh, fallacy first, but if you want to talk about partnering, this is the second, this is the second line of defense that I hear from people in your company. And I've been, I've been mm -hmm. looking at your company for now the past four years. I've, I've seen so all the videos. That, that's me. the I first thing, know, the first thing they'll tell for. me is this isn't multi-level marketing. It's direct sales. The second thing they'll tell me is I have a government license. There's no way this is a scam. The third thing they'll say is look at all these legitimate companies that are partnered with us. There's no way they would partner with a scam. So, this is the next thing I have issue, an, an issue with. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the companies that is partnered with you, I believe, is TD Ameritrade. Is that correct? Okay. I'm not sure, but okay. Give me the name of one policy issuer that's uh, very legitimate that, that is uh, partnered with your company. I, I'm not here representing companies. Let's well, talk about you're, Bro, you're using companies saying, oh, all these companies are partnered with us, so it's so legit. So just, I'm not asking you to name your company, but name one of the companies that is partnered with your company. There's several, over like 100 just, of them. Just give me one. I'm going to make a point with, when you tell me it. I, I'm not getting into companies. Okay. So these companies, these insurance policy issuers that are partnered with your company, your company is a marketer for these companies you sell the products on behalf of these companies the products correct. they create right so no, you are correct. essentially a vendor for these companies is that fair to say okay right sort of the analogy that i give for this is saying you saying that you or your your platform is partnered with these companies is sort of like a convenience store owner saying that he's partnered with coca-cola because he sells coca-cola Coca-Cola probably doesn't even know who that guy is and they don't care because he's helping them sell Coca-Cola. I don't that that doesn't imply to us as well because guess what? One of the top companies that we're talking about, like we're owned by that company. Like one of the top five biggest companies in the world. That's what we that's who we're owned by as a platform. So um no, we're not talking about a, a, a company like let's say that they have no idea they just order their things on Amazon, say bring these things to my store so I can offer to my clients. No. We or or backing is one of the top five biggest companies. It's a a reinsurance company. Put that in perspective. A company that insures insurance company. This is what owns us. So I mean, let let's let's hear what you have to say. Okay, I mean that's great. Who, whoever owns your company, the umbrella mm -hmm. corporation that owns it. It's it's sort of besides the point. I'm responding directly to what you said, which is that it's not a scam because there's no way it's a scam because we're partnered with these huge companies. And what I'm saying to you is that's sort of like a convenience store owner saying, there's no way I'm doing anything bad in this convenience store. I'm partnered with Coca-Cola. I'm partnered with Doritos. Do you see how silly that sounds? But let me, let me ask you this. Before you can, you no, can be able to me, partner. Though. No, 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 no. I, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't answer you. But listen, that's your stance on it. Again, I do see where you're coming from. But let me ask you this. With Let's say the companies that you affiliate with, did you have to did you have to do any legal form? You had to fill any legal form to I used to do affiliate marketing as well. This is one of the reasons I'm asking you this. Did you at one point had to fill out a form to so that they know you partnered up with them? How did they pay you? Because they know that you affiliate with them, correct? 
I, I, what companies are you talking about? Like, I don't work with any companies right now. I just do this you, by myself. Well, you, you were marketing, uh, well, the, one of your videos, the last video I watched, you were, mar you were talking about a product. Oh yeah. Uh, I did a, a paid sponsorship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What now, about it? When you're doing that sponsorship, you, you actually registered at some place for them to be able to know that you are actually one of the, uh, one of the sponsors, right? So if I understand your question correctly, you're asking if, if I registered somewhere before let's, they let's paid me way. to let's promote their way. my, I used to I used to do affiliate marketing. Uh, I had to fill out, um, I had to get a, a tax exempt with with Amazon. I had to do a few different forms with Amazon yeah, yeah. so that they know I was legit, yeah. so that they could send things to me. Now again, I could be a, I could be a, a scam in the background, but I had to do these forms so that they have some sp steps of verification to know that I'm, you know, the person that they're. Yeah, they're, for they're sure. I have that too. I have an Amazon affiliate pro, uh, link Correct. too. Yeah. Correct. Correct. So, so, so let me ask you this. If, if we're as, as a brand, okay, we're owned by one of the top five biggest companies in the world. Okay. And because of what we do, we're able to, to help other. And that, now again, it's not that we went to other companies to say, Hey man, you got to let us do this. We have companies that literally changed their whole system so they could work with us. Why would, why would a company really like, just look into a company that is a legit scam and be like, I like the type of scam that you guys are doing. Let me partner up with you guys. Even with my great reputation where everybody loves what I do, let me just partner up with you guys. Well, I, you guys are great. Yeah, scam. that's a fair question. Think about that. That's a fair question. My answer to that is there's probably a strong likelihood that those companies that you claim to be partnered with have very little to no insight about what your company does and how it operates at all. Because like my convenience store example, there's thousands, if not tens of thousands of convenience stores, grocery stores, uh, bodegas around the world that sell Coca-Cola. Do you think Coca-Cola is acutely aware of how every one of those different stores operates day to day? Of course not. They don't care because those vendors are helping to sell Coca-Cola. That's what they care about. And similarly, well, those big insurance companies that you claim to be partnered with, you guys are a vendor for them, helping them to sell their policies. I, so it, it's possible they don't even know. And if you guys did get in trouble for running a pyramid scheme, which I believe you guys are a pyramid scheme, and actually recently totally, your company did get in trouble up here in uh, Ontario, but mm -hmm. that's aside, besides the point. Even if those companies, even if something did happen to your company, those big companies that you say you're partnered with, they wouldn't be on the hook because you are just selling on behalf of them. So it, it's a completely moot point. It really is. Well, like I said before, we are, we're, we're, we're one of the top five big, well, our parent company is one of the top five biggest in the world, almost a trillion dollar company. So, I mean, you could, you could bring that up. But one of the things I'll tell you is this. This is the financial services industry, okay? This is the highest, highest regulated industry in the world. Here's what I mean by that. Because people care more about their money than they care about their own health, okay? If that's the case, do you really think something like that would have, I mean, have been ab around as long as it has? Yes, and okay, I have Your parent company has been around for almost 200 years. Have you heard of slavery? That was around I for have. hundreds of years, and it was legal too. Isn't that crazy? It's almost like the government has the capacity to be corrupt. Then, have have uh, you heard okay, of Bernie so, Madoff? Have you heard of Bernie so, Madoff? So, so let's say let's say a pyramid scheme was legal. Okay, then they are legal. Support. They're called MLMs. You're right. I agree with you. Like I said before, I'm in a direct sales uh, company. I get paid when I help people, not when I recruit people. But then again, I want to recruit the world. Here's why I want to do that. Okay. okay? Just like you said about Coca-Cola, I need to have an outlet in every cities, every country, like you name it. This is what we need to be at. And that's what I'm looking for. So okay. um, your point, I, I don't know where you're going with this, but just like Coca-Cola, well, you could consider me as Coca-Cola. I need to have an outlet everywhere. Okay, because I want, I want communities makes sense. to change. Makes I sense. want people to have access to the, to the right things. When you think of retirement, you think of how people are helping people in the US, okay? There's no one doing what we're doing. Put that in perspective because the people that, the, some of the people that has the licenses that we have, guess what? They only want to work with people that has money. That's why most of the people are on the bottom. If you make $250,000, you, you're part of the f top 5%. Okay? Nobody's helping these people. Guess what we do? We help these people. We, we educate them. We enlighten them. When it comes to knowing what's out there, we do that. For me, when I got started in this company, nobody says, hey, man, you got to do this. They didn't put a gun in my head and say, I got to do this. Okay, when I, see, when I saw what they're able to do, 
it made sense, guess what? Now we're educating and help more families. Listen, the, my, my background is Haitian. I want to be able to help the Haitian communities. Okay, and how do we do that? When you think of the Haitian communities, the most lacking when it comes to financial education, they have no idea what these things are. Who's going to be able to help them? Now, you're telling me there's, you know, for as many Haitians as there are here in the U.S. and in Canada at the same time, who's going to help those people? Okay? I mean, like, like I said, I, I appreciate what you're doing. That, that's completely fine. Okay? If, if anything, more people are knowing that we're out there. Okay? Right. And the way they, they, however they want to take it, that's completely fine. When I saw what this was able to do for, for my family, it made sense that I come on and be able to do this. Guess what? I graduated in, in, in college in accounting. Okay, what I make here, I would not have been able to make that in accounting. Okay, and if I could help other people to be in a position where they could set their families free as well, by all means, that's what we're doing. Okay, so there was a few different points and a few different questions in there, and I want to give you the courtesy of responding to each of the things that you feel are important because if I'm doing something wrong, if I'm misleading people or miseducating people, I would like for someone who's knowledgeable like yourself to enlighten me so that I could do a better a service for the people that watch my content, my 60,000 subscribers. So can you start, can you maybe try to uh, stay with me and go one by one and, and maybe do you have a question in there that you wanted to ask me or something you wanted me to address because uh, I tend to lose my uh, train of thought when, when we have these long, um, you know, interludes. Okay, okay. Well, let, let, first, first question, let, let's, start, let's start like this. The financial industry right now they need over 600,000 people with the license that I have to be able just to help to keep up with the men. Put that in perspective. You have the baby boomers generation, okay? These people right now are looking into retirement, and most of them can't make it. Why? Because back then, retirement used to be you get a pension, and you're able to retire on that. Right now, you don't do that anymore. They give people an empty account, like a 401k, okay, that people have to put money into that account, and hopefully – they'll make it to retirement, okay? okay? Now, if nobody's out there to educate these people, who do you think is going to do the job? Who's, who's going to educate those families? I don't know. Right, and, and, and we were, our platform was able to come up with a, a, a way to be able to help those families, but you want to call it a scam? I do call it a scam. Well, I mean, like I said, I'm not here to, to say whether, like, what you call it or what you don't call it, okay? If this scam is what's going to go out there and educate and help families, Help families to retire. Help with, you know, generational wealth. Okay? Help put their families in better place. When a family, like recently I had, uh, I had a, a client of mine that, that passed, and I was the only one that was able to help. Okay? Because what? Me, uh, Wall Street couldn't help. I was the only one that was able to, to be able to help that, that client. When she passed, her, her kids was able to keep their house. Got it. Okay, listen, if, if, if you call that a scam where I'm able to put that family in a better I see, place, I see. listen, by all means, I want to do more of this scam. Let me answer that. Mm -hmm. So this is a, a problem that I face when talking to people from your company or companies that uh, deal with similar products is instead of talking about the multi-level marketing, uh, recruiting endless chain, which is the model that they have for their distributors, they want to talk to me about the rays of sunshine, which are the people who buy policies who do end up actually benefiting from them. I want to be very clear. I have nothing against life insurance. I am not opposed to life insurance. I don't think people being educated about life insurance is a scam. I don't think the concept of life insurance is a scam. I think the fact that your company uses life insurance as its disguise instead of shampoo or protein bars or cleaning supplies, things that other MLM companies might use on the surface. I think that is a very clever way of being able to deflect from wrongdoing by saying, yo, you, you, if this is a scam, uh, explain that to the lady who uh, I sold her a policy last year and then her husband died and now she's the beneficiary of that policy and without me, she wouldn't have even had that policy. That is, you are talking about such a negligible, minuscule fraction of people who ever come to be involved with your company. And what I am talking about is the incalculable damage that is done to people who actually sign up with your company as distributors. And that amount of money that is generated by the losses of those distributors far, far, far outweighs 
any positive thing you could tell me about some little old lady who got her policy paid out? Let me let me ask you this. I started nine companies, um, went and got LLCs and, and those things. I never continued on with those with those companies. Would you consider that? Well, I mean, technically it was a loss of money because I never used it to do anything, right? It was a loss of money, but voluntarily, because guess what? Nobody told me go and do that. I started a marketing company, okay, doing exactly what you're doing now. I started doing YouTube videos, all these things. I tell you what, I never, I never continued on with it. Now you doing this, you keep doing obviously, and you know it's as profitable, which is very, it's amazing. But imagine if, if at one point when you just started that company, you had just give up. Let's put that in perspective. Most small I businesses, see. they never get any profits. Would you say this person who decided, hey man, let me let me see if I could do something to leave up to leave something behind for my family. Let me the person that decided to make that decision to go and start that, are you saying they, you know, they lost money? I mean, they, they lost a lot of money because what they decided to do was it, it didn't work or no, not at all. Actually, I, I have a similar story. When I was uh, 20 years old, I thought maybe real estate mm -hmm. would be a good thing for me to get into. And so I paid to do my real estate licensing course. And after going through the modules, I decided, you know, this really isn't for me. And I decided not to do it. So that $900 or whatever it was that I spent on the you training materials, I lost mm -hmm. it. And of course, it was a voluntary decision. However, I all was right. not misled by some realtor who told me, you got to do this. There's an unlimited income potential. You can make millions of dollars. Just look at me. That, it, it truly was my own consensual decision. In multi-level marketing, it can't be said to be a, an informed, independent choice to join an MLM because what is being advertised does not exist. This unlimited income potential, they, they leave out all of the damning information that like 99.7% of people annually in any MLM lose money. And we can go into that too. They leave out all of that information and they mislead the customer. And then when I come to talk to someone like yourself about why I think it's a scam, you're going to say to me, uh, this is another thing you guys say, by the way, which is that, oh, well, wasn't it their choice? So if they lost money, wasn't it their choice? So we're blaming the, the victim here. And, and what was their choice? To trust you. So you're admonishing the people who lost money because they trusted you and then saying they just made a poor consumer decision. But isn't that in a way criticizing yourself? I, I, I don't know anybody that's um, that. I mean, as far as losing money, like I, I don't get where you're going with this. OK, so you can when, I explain when, how people I lose I money? I, hold on, hold on. Not yet. I ahead. don't I don't ever put a gun in people's head and say, hey, man, you of course have to not do this. Guess what I did? I sit down, I do a presentation. The presentation, here's what we do to help families, and here's how we get paid. I ask them, hey, listen, with what you're seeing, do you want to learn how we help families? Do you want to learn more about that, or do you want to learn more about how we get paid? Okay, they tell me, hey, listen, tell me more about how you get paid. I say, I help this family, and I get paid. I'm able to help. See, and I this get paid. is such a vague say, term. Hey, you guys always say these things. Help families. I get paid five ways. You can't name the five ways. And then when I ask you, so is it multi-level marketing? You say, no, it's not multi-level marketing. It's direct sales, but I want to recruit the world. It's like, listen, you, and then you say such these vague statements. I sit down and I help a family. I say, what does that mean? Well, we sit down with them. We give them a presentation. We talk to them. We help them. What does that mean? Oh, well, you know... <laughs> Go on. When I'll I, let you when continue. When I sit with families, I educate them about the differences between life insurance. I educate about the differences between retirement accounts. I educate about different ways to grow money. After I educate them, if it makes sense, client, client would tell me, hey, can you tell me more about this? How can I grow my money? How can I, how can I have more coverage? How can I do this thing? This is, what, this is how I help a family. Okay. When somebody asks me, how do I get paid? I help this family with this, 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 and that, and I get paid. Okay, How is so, that vague? So, so let me ask you about your, cust about your clients. That, that might mm -hmm. be a good way to get to the bottom of this is, tell me, go, about your, tell me about your clients. Who do you typically sell to? Because in my, uh, in my mind, if I was to imagine me going out there mm -hmm. with my license, my real estate license, my insurance license, I would think that, A, it would probably be pretty challenging because when it comes to insurance especially, I don't know of a type of insurance that you can't get online without having to talk directly to anybody. So that would be the first obstacle in my way is convincing people to 
sit down with me, as you say you do, convincing people first to sit down with me and eventually buy what I'm selling when they could just stay home and look online and fill out the form online. And I mean, that's my, that's how I have my insurance, my health insurance and my car insurance is done online. I've never had to talk to anybody about it. So there's my first challenge. The second mm -hmm. challenge I would think Not a is challenge at all, but I hear you. the second challenge I would, so I guess before I go into the second challenge, I would get you uh, to respond to that. That first one first is tell me about your clients. How do you go about selling? How do you go about finding new people to sell to? How do you, how do you manage to do the impossible in a world of Amazon, Walmart, Target, and online insurance sales? How do you manage to consistently sit down with new clients and, uh, and sell them stuff? Go ahead. The reason we have to, we, we go, um, we, we have to, it's necessary that we hear is because when was the last time you, you heard somebody woke up and be like, Hey, I need to get life insurance. It's a great day out today. I need to get some life insurance. Yep. When's the last time you heard somebody say that? Never. Ne exactly. Never. Nobody ever think of that. There, there are a few things that are requirements. It's, it's a requirement for you to have car insurance when you're driving out there. It's a requirement for you to have health insurance. Okay, most, most cases you have your job would give you health insurance. So when you go to the hospital, they're able to, you know, to, to do that. But okay. it's not either legal or illegal to have life insurance. Here's why. When you have life insurance, it's for your family. It's not for it's it won't it's not doing good to any anybody else but your family, okay. So now when I sit with the family, I educate them about the options that they have out there. Because guess what? When you go to work, what would happen is you have your job would give you, let's say they give you a certain amount of of, of work of life insurance, okay. Let's say they they say they give you you know fifty thousand worth of life insurance. Now, who's gonna educate you on how to leave a legacy for your family? Who's gonna educate you on how? To, to help your families for a generation to come. No, we've when been over that. The, what person, I'm asking I'm, you is how do you go about finding new customers, new clients? Go I, ahead, tell me and that. And listen, anybody I talk to is a new client because guess what? As long as you use money, I can help you. As long as you okay? use money. That's correct. Uh, do you have any life insurance right now? I can help you right now as we're on here right now. And you're in Canada. Okay, you, we can are help you. Are you in Canada? Well. Um, no, but I, my, I have team in Canada. Okay, so yeah, I do have insurance. Okay. Well, listen, with, with something so important, would you be open to taking a second look at it? See how we can either make it better, lower your premium, increase your coverage, add benefits to it? My, my answer is I actually wouldn't, and I'll tell you why. That's completely fine. I, like I said, my job is to ask you. Can I, can I tell you why I wouldn't purchase yeah, an insurance definitely. policy from you? Mm -hmm. Because what is stopping me from going and making the purchase directly from the policy issuer. You know that you mentioned those companies that you're partnered with. What's stopping Correct. me from just going directly to them and buying from them instead of having to deal with the middleman? Well, put that in perspective, any company you go with, you're going to have to sit with an agent. That's not true. So you, hey, it's, it's simply not you. true. When you, I have car I, well, insurance. Listen, I'm not. I have I'm car insurance. Tell you what, never had to sit with an agent. Did my quote that online is using? Guess what? When, when, did my when quote online? My same with my health insurance. When you go on my page, you do it online as well. Because guess what? This is, it, it's, there's not much of a difference between this and affiliate marketing. You can literally go on my page and sign up for insurance. Can I tell Ooh. you the difference? You don't? Sure, good. So with affiliate marketing, and I'm familiar with mm -hmm. this because I have an Amazon affiliate link for the book. Uh, mm -hmm. This book right here actually, uh, Ponzinomics, which talks about the history of multi-level marketing and explains yes. in detail yes. what, what is Great a pyramid book. scheme. Yeah, have mm -hmm. you read it? Oh, I, I started to, but I never really look into it. You started I, to. When, when people are saying a Ponzi scheme, and it's important to understand the, the background language of where all that comes from. Yeah, I, I, would, I definitely recommend the book. But again, I, I recommend I, the book. So with my affiliate yes, oh, link. To I, I definitely recommend it. I, I'm against Ponzi schemes. I'm against, against pyramid schemes. I'm against, <laughs> you know, all the things that, again, this is why I said I agree with where you're coming from. But understanding so it's, it's, it's good to understand something before you. Um, Respect. Before okay. You, you get so, into it. so the difference, mm -hmm. the uh, a couple of the differences are with my affiliate link. I mean, you you know this. You're a smart guy. You've done you've done it before. With my affiliate link, the way I get paid is I use my platform. I use mm -hmm. the the you know. Thankfully, I have a a good sized audience, sixty thousand people, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. if they go into my description and they click the link and they make a purchase through it, I might get a percentage of the purchase paid to me for making the sale because I potentially brought a new customer to Amazon that made a purchase that they might not have made unless I had been there. The Boom. difference between what I do and what you do 
-huh. I guess that, well, that's not the only thing I do, so I shouldn't say what I do and you do. The difference between that and what you do is that I am not recruiting people who sign up under me and pay to join the opportunity of going and pushing that same affiliate link. I also well, don't I'm get paid don't more off that affiliate link depending on how many people I have under me. Those people below well, me are also not mandated to go and recruit people as well. It is also not uh, an ever-expanding endless chain where you have people on the bottom earning practically nothing because they've so saturated the market with Ponzinomics mm -hmm. link sellers that they can't make anything. And I am sitting at the top collecting all of the wealth. Those are the, the key differences. And if, if you read Ponzinomics, uh, Robert talks about the four defining traits of a pyramid scheme. Pay to play, mm -hmm. that wasn't present in my Amazon affiliate link. Endless mm -hmm. chain recruiting model, that wasn't mm -hmm. present in my Amazon affiliate link. Mm -hmm. Recruiting mandate, that wasn't present in my Amazon affiliate link. And the extreme money transfer of the losses of the 99 going to be the profits of the 1%, that wasn't present in my affiliate link. So Boom, and, and none of those are, are present in my, in my business. Or in my, now, now let me let me put that in perspective for you. I have been in both sides. I used to own a marketing agency with my marketing agency. Guess what? I was with affiliate links as well. Okay. Now listen, if you only an affiliate, you were recruited to do affiliate. That's 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 okay. Okay. But guess what? I tell you what. If you're open to make it more, it make more sense to have other people share that link for you as well, and they make more long term. You make more. But that's if you're open to doing that. But that's. Well, obviously you're not open to doing that. If you're okay with just making how you're making right now, that's completely fine as well. But what I'm saying is I used to own a I used to own a marketing agency where I, I would have affiliates. I would have people that affiliate my product. Okay. And I've been on the other end as well where I was affiliating other people's products as well. And guess what? Sometimes you'll find someone that says, Hey man, I want to be able to do what you do. Can you tell more about this? It's the same thing that I'm telling you here as well. When people are get when people get recruited here, they, they they're not it's not an obligation to do anything. It's never an obligation. It's not an obligation to either, um, you know, get, get products. It's not an obligation for you to recruit. You decide this is what you want to do and you go and do it. There have been people that has been doing this for years and years on end. And guess what happens? They never recruit. They're okay with making the amount that they're making. None of it is, is, is a requirement. I can't, I can't hear you. Sorry, I must have muted myself. I said, okay, let's go I one by you. one. So earlier in this conversation, near the beginning, you said mm -hmm. that the way to advance uh, to get a higher commission or to mm -hmm. get bonuses is dependent mm -hmm. on how many people you have under you. Wouldn't you that call- That is correct. What, what if you don't want to advance? What if you don't like want you to- you right now. I just, I just told you you could make more money. I love that. Let's, let's, what okay, you let's stick with that. Mm -hmm. Let's stick with that. So correct. we agree that if you, in your business, in your company- Mm -hmm. If you wanted to increase the percentage of commission you got paid from a policy, you would have to have mm -hmm. more people under you, right? Correct. Correct. Perfect. And you're saying, well, what if you don't want to do that? What if you don't want to recruit? You just want to sell. You tell me, I'll let you be, I, I know the answer, but I'm going to mm -hmm. let you do, uh, I'm going to let you say it. Okay. What is the starting commission in percentage for somebody who has zero people under them, they just got their license in your company for selling, let's say, a life insurance policy. What percent commission do they get paid? What is the starting percentage? Yeah. We're getting into companies. No, there's several companies actually that have okay, the exact perfect. same starting you. percentage. 25%. So 25? 25%. Mm -hmm. 25%. Okay, so let's imagine that somebody mm -hmm. who just got their insurance license was such a skilled salesperson that they were able mm -hmm. to sell $4,000 of insurance policies in one month or one or, or four $1,000 policies totaling 4,000 in total costs for the whole mm -hmm. month, right? Mm -hmm. Do you think that that would be pretty impressive? Um, it would be pretty impressive and they would get, they would be events as well. Okay. So they, they would, They'd be pretty impressive. I think so too. I think if somebody mm -hmm. was able to go out there and find four people to actually spend a thousand dollars on anything, that they would be an exceptional salesperson. And for Correct. them to only get twenty five percent commission, which would be one thousand dollars, think of all the work they would have to do: contacting those four people, sitting down with them, actually writing up the whatever, only to get one thousand dollars. And mind you, that one thousand dollars is an advanced commission. So if one of those four people cancels any time in the next 12 months, what happens? 
They get a charge. They back. get a Boom. charge back. So, yep. yep. And that's and we're talking about one month. Mm -hmm. So, if I was able to think of the opportunity you're presenting me right now, right? Mm -hmm. I know for a fact that MLM, sorry, that insurance companies that don't use this MLM model where advancement is based on recruiting, you know they pay right. their insur you know they pay their life insurance sales reps 90 to 100% or more advanced commission for an, a life insurance policy they sell Nin without having to, to recruit anyone? 90 to 100% of what? The advanced commission. So the policy price. Let me ask you this. Price. Let me ask you this. No, you, we're not asking me anything right now. We're sticking on one thing at a time. We're not jumping around. Your company starts at 25% commission. The only way it goes higher is if I recruit more people. So Correct. even if I could sell $10,000, of insurance in a month, I'd only make $2,500. That's not great. Whereas I could go get the same state license to sell insurance and go to an insurance company that doesn't require me to recruit in order to advance or increase my commission, and I would be getting paid 100%. So already, already, you could say it's not a mandate. You could say, oh, you don't have to recruit, but already there is an incentive, a huge incentive to recruit. Now, Let me let's say you recruit. Mm -hmm. I'm going to recruit with my warm market because those are the people mm -hmm. I know. I'm going to recruit my friends, my family. Ignoring the overlap that exists between friend A and friend B. You get what I mean? If I recruit my best friend, we know a lot of the same people. So by me recruiting him, I am cannibalizing not only my own potential sales, but also my potential recruits because now he's out there recruiting too. And what you get is, and I talked to you about this on the phone the other day, what you get is this model where you have Febby on the top, the 10 people he recruited, they recruit 10, they recruit 10, and assuming that everybody stays and assuming that everybody is successful in recruiting 10, eventually you have so many insurance salespeople that the idea that one of them could make an actual sale is laughable and you end up with a bunch of people on the bottom who are earning 25% max commission and you at the top earning 100%, that's, that's a pyramid scheme. Hey, listen. Well, let me let me let me let me let me let me say it like this. <laughs> okay. I I spoke with I spoke with a, a licensed professional this morning. Okay, and she's getting paid twenty five dollars an hour to sell insurance with an insurance company. Okay. Okay. Now, now let me ask you this. Would you rather? Would you rather get paid? 20, well, there, there's a few, there's a few ways I'm, go, I'm going about this. The first one is, would you rather get paid $25 an hour, okay, to do something? Would you rather get 25%, okay? Or would you rather get 100% that you're going to have to pay uh, in the back end for more? Because one of the questions, one of the things I want you to think of, if I have a license and I'm doing this, why is it that I'm not working $30 an hour, $25 an hour, $20 an hour even, because there's companies that does that. Okay, why is it I'm not working with for twenty dollars an hour with that license? Why is it that um, I'm not with a company that gives a hundred percent? Question for you: Would you rather would you rather get a hundred percent of a of, hundred of dollars, or or would you rather get you know twenty percent of a thousand dollars? Would I rather get twenty percent of a hundred or twenty percent of a thousand? Would you rather get a hundred percent of a hundred or twenty percent of a thousand? I would rather get, I mean, it really depends. What, what, on, what, what does it depend on? If you're just asking me arbitrarily, would I rather get 100% of 100 or 20% of 1,000? I would choose 20% of 1,000 because that's more money. Okay, bam. Because <laughs> here's what I want you to think of. Well, yeah, I mean, you, you're right. I agree with you. It's more money. It's more money for doing, for doing the same work. When you're with companies that, does 100, that will tell you to give you 100%, first of all, most of these companies is final expense. Okay, final expense, which where you're doing something that you're giving someone, let's say, uh, you know, $50,000. And again, this is one of the reasons it's important for us to be able to, uh, to, sit with, to sit with families. Okay, like the other day I was walking and I saw a company where they would give you $10,000 worth of life insurance for over $100. Okay, if I sit with those same clients, you know what, with that over $100, I could give them a million dollars worth of life insurance. Would you rather get a million or would you rather get ten thousand? <laughs> it's a it's a crazy question as well. I, of course, it's definitely laughable. So you're okay? you're you're not making any sense. You I, I don't expect you to understand. You don't do insurance, 
But I don't need to do I'm insurance well. to do basic, basic math. I'm, I've, I managed to answer your question about would I rather have 100% or 25% just fine without doing insurance. So don't act right. like it's beneath me to understand because I'm uninformed about the industry. If, we're, if it's so simple and it's not a scam, I shouldn't need to ha uh, be licensed or ver well versed in insurance, right? Well, listen, if you it was, sit down if with it was people that, every day, you sit so down simple. with. You said you're from where? You said your background is what? Haitian? I'm from Haiti. I'm Haitian. Right. Proud. So are those yes. people that you said are so uneducated in the Haitian community, are they. Do they not understand because they're not in insurance? So why should it be difficult for me to understand? Well, let me let, let me let me let me break it down for you. If it was that simple, why do you think why do you think most people don't have it? Have. Or maybe maybe what was it? They don't have insurance or they don't have the proper form of or type of insurance. Are you asking me Education. why do people not have life insurance? Well, well, you're saying they're uneducated. It's not their fault. It's not their fault. These not are the point I'm making. I'm just saying you, you tried to say I don't expect you to understand because you're not in insurance. No, because you and tell me you don't understand where I'm going with this. Which I didn't again, say I don't understand. I, don't I said understand you're it. not making sense. You agreed you'd get you'd rather get a, you'd rather get twenty percent of a thousand, right? Okay, we're going back to this. Okay, okay. So now by a hundred percent of a hundred, most client you'd help with a final expense product, you you know it's going to be about a hundred dollars. Okay. Okay. It's gonna be about a hundred dollars. Okay. Now, when I go self I help a client, we don't just do insurance. I help with a lot more than just insurance, and this is why you're getting twenty five percent of a lot more than you could you would do with one company than you would ever do with another company that only does insurance. But okay, so we just went over how in your company the starting commission is twenty five percent for making a sale. Yeah, and, and how in you, other if you stay at twenty five percent, then you don't you don't need to be here to be quite honest with you. So let me answer. Because because my first answer. my first day here, I did ten ten thirty. I did not start with the twenty five percent. Listen, just so I could answer your question. Let me. Okay, we established mm -hmm. that with your company, the starting commission is twenty five percent. Correct. And with other companies, insurance companies that don't use this, you would call it agency. I would call it multi level marketing model. Mm -hmm. You get paid. You can get paid a hundred percent without ever having to recruit. So, mm -hmm. how are you? How exactly are you trying to convince me that WFG is the better, uh, the better business when just from selling you make less? From selling you make less. You said in your company you start twenty five percent, right? Correct. And I'm saying. Generally, in the insurance industry that doesn't have an MLM model, all those companies, mm -hmm. which are the mm -hmm. majority, you could get 90% for making a sale. So, would you, I'll there's, ask you, would no you rather have 20% of a thousand or there's, would you rather have 90% of a thousand? We have two different contracts. First Just of all, we me. have agency. Would, and you we have rather have, would you rather have 25% of a policy sale or 90% of a policy sale? Well, knowing how we do it in this company, I would rather have 25%. You would rather have 25% rather than 90%. Okay, so go ahead, explain that. Well, I would rather, I would rather make a dollar of 100 people than to make $100 myself. I see. Now, what about those, 90, those 100 people? How are they doing? Well, if they would rather get a dollar from 100 people as well, welcome. Great. So let's do it. Let's do the math. Do you have a pen and paper in front of you? Uh, I do. Okay. So you said you did 10, 10, 30 your first day, right? Mm-hmm. Correct. What, tell the people, what does 10, 10, 30 mean? Oh, you, you, you help 10 families in 30 days. So what does help 10 families mean? You sell 10 policies? Correct. And then what's the second 10? You recruit 10 people. Okay, so I'm guessing, this is an assumption, so please correct me if I'm wrong, that mm -hmm. those 10 sales you made were to those 10 recruits. No, 100% okay? not. None of them became a client. So you recruited 10 people over here, mm -hmm. and you sold 10 policies over here, and there was no overlap. None of those 10 people that you recruited were, were customers. Correct. So none of those 10 people that joined purchased their own policy before they joined. Correct. So all of those 10 people that joined didn't have life insurance and don't have life insurance. Correct. All right. Let's assume that's true. So you recruited 10 people and now in the, you said your, your business at the beginning of this, you said your business, your company is mm -hmm. Febby. You said you don't represent anyone. You represent you. Correct. So Correct. let's put Febby on the top of the, of the, I won't say pyramid, Let's say corporation. We'll say corporation. So I have a circle that I've drawn here. And on the top of this uh, page, this is Febby, okay? 
So mm -hmm. Febby recruited 10 people. So in the second line, I'm just going to write 10. Instead of doing 10 circles, I'm just going to write the number 10. It's easier. Now, I'm guessing that the goal of those 10 people below you is to also do 10, 10, 30, right? If that's their goal, by all means. Why would Why it not, not be, would their want it to be their goal? Why would it not be their goal? Well, that's a question you should ask him, not me. No, but you yourself said you would rather have 25% because in this business, you could get a dollar off of 100 people's work rather than you working and trying to make it all yourself. So doesn't Correct. it make sense that's why that I those people would duplicate the, the same place. thing? Why wouldn't, what they, why would, wouldn't they want to do the same thing? Is that what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, I'm asking. Wouldn't they want to do the same thing? It seems wise. Oh, I mean, 100%. Why not? Okay, yeah, your reasoning makes sense. So let's assume mm -hmm. that they all want to do the same thing. So each of those 10 people recruits 10 people. Now, 10 times 10 is 100. Now, let's say those 100 people also recruit 10. How many people do we have? 10 times 100 is 1,000. So we've got 1,000 mm -hmm. people in only three levels of recruitment. 10, 10, 10. 10 one Man, times 10 is 10. My business would be blowing up right now. Wouldn't it be awesome? I, I know. Like it would be incredible. And then let's say you go another 10. Now you got 10. Thousand people. Wow, it's amazing. Oh man, I'd be making more time, more time millions be, right now. Wow, it'd be beautiful. It'd be amazing. It'd Keep be amazing. going. Do more uh, numbers. I know. So so let's imagine that those ten thousand people who are on the bottom layer, right? Mm hmm Do you think they have an equal chance that you had? Or do you think that it is harder for them because they are now ten thousand people late to the party, essentially? Are we are we talking about are we talking about reality? Or are we talking about you know what, what what expectations? Well, this is an expectation that I am setting here on paper. It's obviously not using real people, but this is actually a very generous hypothetical that I'm going through because this hypothetical is built on the assumption that all of those ten people you first brought in successfully mm -hmm. each recruit ten who never leave who successfully recruit 10 and so on. So this is actually like a dream scenario. So we're going off right. the hypothetical That's... right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what I want to know is you can see that it's continually expanding, right? It's supposedly, yeah. Yeah, it's, well, it is. You had mm -hmm. 10, then 100, then 1,000, then 10,000. Mm -hmm. yeah, if you yeah. keep going, if you go down one more level, you got 100,000 because 10,000 times 10, 100,000. So within five levels, let me show you here. Within five levels, we've gone from one to 10 to 100 to 1,000 to 10,000 to 100,000. Mm -hmm. If we continue, if we go even one more level, we'd have a million people in the company. Don't you see how there becomes the potential for market saturation, meaning there are so many insurance salespeople that, and not enough customers to go around. This is why I take issue with you saying that what you do is direct sales. Because if it was truly direct sales, the last thing you would want is an ever multiplying downline of salespeople who are selling the same thing you are selling because that means the amount of people that you could sell to shrinks. Are we, uh, again, are we talking about reality or expectation? Well, I'll give you another example. If I was uh, mm -hmm. an ice cream man, this is direct sales, right? Driving around in my ice cream truck selling ice cream. I, is it better or worse for my business to have more ice cream men driving around in the same neighborhood? It's ice cream. It'll melt. Hold on. You said it's ice cream. It will melt? <laughs> If you, have, if you have multiple ice cream trucks in the same neighborhood is what you said, right? <laughs> what I'm asking you is, is it I better? I, I get what you're saying. No, I no. If, saying, if like... I'm an ice cream man driving mm -hmm. around the neighborhood trying to sell ice cream to kids, is it better or worse for my business for there to be other ice cream men driving around? Or it's better if I'm the only one? Um, it's better to have more. Okay. Why is it better to have more? Well, think of... Think of having McDonald's, Burger King, and Wendy's in the same spot. Would you say it'd be better for there for just McDonald's to be in that spot and not the other other companies? Absolutely. Why would you say that? And 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 now let's let's think of marketing real quick. Yeah, yeah. Does it not make sense for you why those other companies are there? Of course it makes sense to why those companies are there. Okay, now now let's talk about that. If it makes sense for them to be there, why would you not want them there? 
If let's it say makes you, what? let's say you own Wendy's and yeah. McDonald's was the first company to yeah, be there. Yeah, yeah. You telling me you would just go into a different market because McDonald's is already doing fast food is what you're telling me. When you go to Walmart, there's a lot of bread, different different brands of bread on the shelf. You telling me instead of going and even though I'm good at bakery, instead of starting a a a, a, a bread company, I should just leave it and go, you know, sell cars because there's too many brands of bread on the shelf is what you're telling me. So, right? My the point and I'm going to use the McDonald's thing too because I actually just put out an interview a couple weeks ago with a uh, a uh, gentleman, Doug, Bro Doug Brooks, he's a franchise lawyer. So he has a ton of experience with McDonald's, Burger King. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's actually a good point to talk about. With the ice cream man, uh, ice cream truck example I, I gave, the, the logical answer is that it's worse for there to be other ice cream men driving around because if there's, let's say, three different ice cream trucks driving around the same neighborhood, that means that there's less potential for customers I could sell to. What I would prefer is to be the only ice cream man on the block. That way I have a complete monopoly on all no, of the what, kids buying ice the cream. Why not be the best company or with a better product where people would come to you and That works too. Yellow. I was just giving you a simple, simple example. So let's use Burger King now. Let's use McDonald's, right? McDonald's and Burger King popping up next to each other mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense to me because if a McDonald's decided, hey, this is a good location to put up a restaurant, and there's lots of families, you know, it's a residential neighborhood, whatever. Burger King is going to go, yo, let's steal some of that market share. Let's go over there so we can steal some customers away and have healthy competition from McDonald's. What you would never see, though, Febby, is a mm -hmm. McDonald's open up right next door to a McDonald's. Do you see how that would be bad for business? Well, exactly. And again, this is why what we do is different as well. Because It's not what different. Because what you are doing is recruiting mm -hmm. people to sell the same thing you are selling, which is like if a McDonald's That's recruited, a, opened up next door to a McDonald's, you are hurting. If it's, if it's truly direct sales, mm -hmm. you recruiting people would be hurting your potential for business. So that means no. there must be another way to make money. No, no, definitely not. People that, people that enters our company, they have different missions, different purposes, okay? What I mean by that is I don't, I don't sell one product, okay? I sell different products that has to do with different things. So, you know, based on what the person is looking for. Now, when we, when we take the example of having McDonald's and Burger King, that makes sense, okay? Whichever has the better product or whichever product the customer likes the most. Again, this is what I do. Some people get into this business to sell insurance. Others get on to sell, uh, to help with investments. Others get on to help with different products. Not everybody's selling the same thing, okay? But that's a, that's a different stance to take. With, when you say, We'll, we'll have two different people in the same neighborhood. I mean, why not have the, the best product? Somebody would talk to me today. Of course, and guess what? Of, never course. Be my client. of course, if there are three different ice cream trucks in the same neighborhood, the only thing that I can hope is that I have the best ice cream so that those other two don't get business. But my point is, wouldn't it be even better if there was just no competition to begin with? No, anything with Think no about what you're saying for a second. Before you disagree, just think about mm -hmm. it. You, you were a kid before. I'm 27. Course, How old are you? I'm 30. You're 30. So we're basically the same age. So you remember mm -hmm. being a kid, being in the neighborhood, and the ice cream truck comes around, right? 100%. If you were that ice cream truck driver on a hot summer day, and you were rolling past the park, and you had the song ding, 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 playing, and all the kids come running to buy ice cream, but you found out that 10 minutes earlier, a different ice cream truck had come through, and all the kids already bought ice cream. Now there's no business left for you. Don't you see how it would be beneficial to be the only ice cream truck that day that had pulled up? No, it's not beneficial to you. If you sell the same product as the next ice cream man, then I guess, yes, you would want to be the, the only one. If you yeah. sell the same product. Regardless okay? of if you sell the same ice cream, worse ice cream, or better ice cream, you I, could have the, let, you could have the worst I don't like ice, all ice cream. cream. Only like coconut ice cream. So that's assuming the Okay, Febby, uh, even if you only had only coconut, coconut ice cream, <laughs> even if you only had coconut ice cream, you would likely do better in terms of sales if there were no other ice cream trucks around. What about the people that are allergic to coconut? You might not get them as customers, but right. you're at least going to do better than if there were other ice cream trucks, whether they sold only coconut or strawberry and chocolate and coconut and Spider-Man and SpongeBob. But the, the thing is, I'm not there to serve one neighborhood. 
I'm there to serve every neighborhood. And Absolutely. I have Absolutely. Okay. And that means that you can so, expand to any neighborhood, right? You correct. can recruit people. You have correct. people in Canada. You have people in the U.S. Correct. But you realize that you are having people recruit people in their warm market, their friends and family, who are in such close proximity to them, usually people that live in the same city. Basically, we're talking about the McDonald's opening up next to a McDonald's. You don't see how Marco, that's let me, let me bad for business. Let me ask you this. Let's say if I wanted to start a YouTube channel now, which I do have one, but I don't, I'm not as, okay. I'm not as, um, as um, active as you are on sure, YouTube. Sure. But let me ask you this. If I was to start a YouTube channel right now and I came to you for advice, what would you tell me? I'll tell you, make the best content. Make the best content. Now, in a way, technically, I'd become competition to you, right? Depends on what your content was. Depends on what my content was. But YouTube has so many people. Almost everybody has access to YouTube now, yep, right? Yep. Why is it that pe different people keeps making money, you know, having doing YouTube content? Go ahead. I mean, obviously they're doing their own thing on here. Like, for, for example, you are looking into different companies and say, hey, here's why so and so shouldn't go into this company. I tell you what, it's a good thing for me because here's what happens: these people they need the products that I do, and guess what? If you're on here, you're looking for these products. I'm open. I definitely want to be able to help you with that. But I'll tell you this. With what I do, okay, someone is looking into, when, if someone is looking into products, we're able to help them, okay? Mm -hmm. There are other companies that does the same thing as well, which is completely fine. But guess what? These other companies are not offering what I can offer. I bring something completely different to the marketplace. So when what do you have, me, what, what, proprietary, what proprietary product, unique product do you have that other life insurance companies don't have? Well, some different companies offer different products. Yeah. So it's not it's not a unique product that other companies doesn't have. You have this company offer this product or this company would offer this product, but it comes with different things. The easiest the e the easiest person to sell life insurance to is the person that already has life insurance. Let's put it this way. Here's why. They already understand life insurance. They know what it is that we're to help them with. Right. Okay? So just to put that in perspective, here's why it's easy to help them because they already have something that when I come, I upgrade what they have. Okay, they, they sit there, they see the comparison and see, hey, this makes more sense. Let me go with this. They already have life insurance. So the same way we talk about ice cream. Let's say this person, uh, they have a, a vanilla ice cream, which everybody likes vanilla. Okay, let's say I have this coconut and it tastes really good. And I would go to them and say, hey, man, I understand, you know, you like vanilla, but taste this. Okay, does this taste good? Does it taste better than, than vanilla, than the basic that everybody's eating right now? And if they taste it, it tastes, it tastes better than what they have. They'll tell me, hey, Fabi, man, this tastes really good. Let me, let me have this. Okay, this is the same thing I do with families. I would sit with them, share the differences with the different products. And again, what makes sense, they tell me, hey, let me do this. Now, with recruiting, like I said before, I don't put a gun into someone's head and say, hey, let's do this. Listen, for me, when I got recruited, I was mad at the person that recruited me. Here's why. Why didn't you tell me about this before? Obviously, you're not doing your job. Okay, this is where I was at. I was like, why didn't you guys tell me about this already? Okay, because here's why. I know who I am. I know what I'm here to do. I know I'm here to help people. Okay? Some other people, they may be like, hey, man, this sounds good. Let me get started with it. But this business is not a business where you get people, where you, you put a gun in people's head and say, hey, you got to do this. You don't have to do this. And guess what? Most people will not do this. Because if everybody were to come and do this, guess what? Who would work at McDonald's? Who would work at Publix? Who would be your lawyers that you sit with? The doctors. Somebody has to do that. that it's is, not going to be me. That is a great point. And that actually, mm -hmm. that actually adds to my point about how ridiculous this 10, 10, 30 recruiting chain is. Actually, no. Because you can't go past 10 levels, 12 levels without recruiting the Do you know how many people have been going past 10 levels Sebi, since the company you started? Yourself, you yourself earlier in this convo said you want to mm -hmm. recruit the whole world, right? Maybe you were being Correct. hyperbolic. But if, if I you, want to recruit the whole world, definitely, 100%. Okay, so if you want but to recruit like, the whole world, wouldn't you expectation be... Expectation and reality. If you wanted to recruit the whole world, wouldn't mm -hmm. you be ridding the world of lawyers and McDonald's workers and all the things that you just said? I, do, I don't go against them and, and say that they're scams. That's not the question I asked. Would I, would I not want to recruit them? I do recruit them. I have lawyers, I have doctors, we have all these kind of people in here. <laughs> okay. Let me ask you about something different. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you about overrides. Mm -hmm. How many levels in your company do, do overrides get paid out on? So I understand in your company that you're a, 
Uh, do you, are you comfortable saying the name of your rank, what rank you are? Let's say I'm fourth rank or fifth rank. Fourth rank. And how many ranks are there? Six. Six total ranks? Mm -hmm. So you're four out of six. Mm -hmm. And how many levels are paid when it comes to overrides? If you were rank six, let's say, at the very top, mm -hmm. and somebody that was in your downline six levels down who was level one, if they mm -hmm. made a sale, would you get paid on that sale? Yes. Okay, do you know how much you would get paid commission on that sale? The difference of the person that is fourth and me. Got it. So now what I want to ask you is, do you think this scenario that I'm about to describe is ridiculous? So I already this know what, where you're going with this, yeah. Yeah, this is what I'm going to ask you. Mm -hmm. What I'm going to ask you is, have you heard of the handshake rule or sometimes they call it the six degrees of separation. No. So, okay, so okay. what this is is, and I'll keep this brief. What this is, is the theory that you and any one other person on this planet are connected by no more than six mutual connections. Meaning, I know someone who knows someone who knows someone who knows a person in some village in Africa that I would never hope to just spontaneously meet. There is, yes, you get what I yes. mean? So maybe yes. I, I, maybe I, I went that. to high school with some kid and his mom works for the UN and she knows a translator that lives in Europe, who knows a translator that lives in Africa, who knows the local tribe leader, who, you get my point, right? Yeah, 100%, yeah, yeah. So considering that there's six degrees of separation between you and any person on the planet, if you were in that first level of your company and the top person who was six degrees of separation away from you, this could be someone in another country, probably someone you've never even met, because we're talking about your uplines, 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 upline, right? Do you think it's fair that if I make a sale and I'm at the very bottom, that somebody six levels above me got a piece of that? Do you think that's fair? Yes, 100%. Why do you they think that's work. fair when I, I can't think of any other direct sales job, true direct sales job, where mm -hmm. the majority of the commission doesn't go to the person who actually made the sale? I can't think of anything what where do you mean by that? I would do I work sale, and somebody six levels away me. from me would get paid. When I make a sale, the majority of it comes to me. When you make a sale directly, the right. majority of it goes to you. But you're right. at a point where your commission is so high because you have people under you. So the that company can, I did the, the, Right. But let's imagine that you were now on the bottom level because you were there mm -hmm. once before, right? I was. Right. So I when was. you're on the bottom and you make a sale, don't you find it odd or unfair that somebody six levels above you who you've never met, who you will never meet, who had nothing to do with that work that you just did, signing that uh, person's policy, don't you think it's a little strange that they also got a piece of that? Oh man, no, I don't think it's strange. Why do you, why do you why think that's think, weird? Well, why, why don't I think it's weird? Is yeah, weird with, is I think that's think? weird. Okay, okay well, I, I hear you, I hear you, and I, I agree with you, but let me ask you this, let me ask you this. What industry can you go to and find out the bottom person makes the most money? I mean, tell me. I see, so you're, you're trying to make a comparison here. I'm guessing we could use uh, Walmart as an example. The CEO makes more than the cashier. Isn't that the same thing? I'm guessing that's where you're going with this, right? Well, I mean, there, would, you, would you not consider the, 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 the cashier like one of the lowest people? So and, and, being and a cashier is like, not a direct sales job. I can't think of any true sales job. Even other insurance, even other insurance so, companies, for so, example, okay, then, even other insurance companies that don't use this mm -hmm. six-tier model the majority of the commission goes to the person who made the sale. And at most, this actually, w w your company that recently got in trouble up here in Ontario, in the report that the uh, financial regulator wrote about your company, they said, this is so atypical that people would be getting paid overrides on six different levels because the standard in the insurance industry is that at most, there is one level being paid because maybe there's the case where it's like a junior a uh, salesperson, a junior agent who, who is learning the ropes with their, you know, their more senior agent, so they shared a commission. But five, two levels, three levels, six levels, it's unheard of. So uh, I, I, 
I have to reject your comparison here of being the cashier and you make less than the CEO because being a cashier at Walmart is not a direct sales job where you are going out there and trying to sit it down with people and make your own sales. It would never be. It's not a sales job at all. Again, right. So like tell said, me, we're, we're what is another sales company? Bottom. What is another sales job? Real, true, direct sales? Because you said what you do is direct sales, right? You said mm -hmm. what you do is not multi-level marketing, even though mm -hmm. we're paying out on six different levels. What is mm -hmm. a sales job? where six different levels are being paid out to a person? A sales job. I mean, any, any company that has sales, for example, let's, let's take Sam's, for example. They have sales associates. What's Sam's? Sales what, associate what is Sam's? With, with, uh, same, it's kind of like Walmart. Let's Sam's say Club? Branch of Walmart. Yes. Okay, sorry, okay. I'm, in, I'm in Canada. We don't have Sam's Club. Okay, but those are employees, right? Those are not let's their say, own independent Walmart. contractors. They're, they're those people associates. have hourly, they have salary, they have, it, they have benefits, they're, they have schedules. They're sales associates. They have their, their own commission. But that is not a direct okay. sales job, right? Would, would it not be? How is it not? I'm asking you. You said what you it do is, is direct it, sales. It's a direct so hold sales on. position. But Febby, you can't have your cake and eat it too. You can't say at the beginning of this What's call. What's the point of what, having the cake listen if I to can't me. eat it? You, at the beginning of this, you said, I represent Febby. That's the company I represent. I do direct Correct. sales. You, you're not an employee, right? You're your own boss, right? So, Correct. so that means it's different than another than Sam's where those are employees, right? No. But now no, you want to say it's the same. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. Here, here's what I'm saying. We're, 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 we're going into sales. A, a direct sales. sales. I'm sales. going into direct sales. Now, now what you're direct doing sales. is they're, obfuscating they're, they're the meaning sales. of the word sales to say, well, these some... are the people. These are the people in front of the store that is approaching you with a product and say, hey, you need to try this. Hey, you need to buy this. Is that direct okay. sales? Is that the same as an independent contractor going out into is the world and trying to? No, it's not. On how much product they sell you? Pardon me. They get paid on how much, how much, how much products they sell you, how much of these products you buy. That's what they get paid on. Okay. At Sam's, I'm pretty sure that's not how it goes, but I get your point. There are companies where the sales associates inside the store do get paid commission and they can, okay. they can make money off of commission. And in those Would examples, affiliate in those sales? examples, the bulk of the commission is going to the person who made the sale. So even in this example, which is a bit flimsy. It, still, the majority of the money goes to the person who made the sale. In your company, if I'm level one, I only get a measly 25%. Meanwhile, Febby gets a, meanwhile, Febby, six levels above me, who I've never met, gets a piece. Why, why are you level one? It's the example I'm giving you. I'm trying to make you see that it's unfair that people who are on level one would be sharing their commissions with people six levels above them. I think that's absolutely ridiculous. And it, it is further proof that what you do is multi-level marketing. There are multiple levels of people getting paid for one person's work. That does not happen anywhere else. That does not happen anywhere else. If I'm working at Sam's and I make the sale and I make the commission and I'm a sales associate, my upline at Sam's didn't make anything. My upline's upline didn't make anything. You know why? Because that would be ridiculous. Because that would be a pyramid scheme. <laughs> we, we, we really have to agree on disagree. Here's, there, there's a few things to, 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 to take into consideration. When, when, when we're comparing somebody at, at Sims and somebody that does what I do, guess what? I had to get up and I had to put in the work to do what I do. Uh -huh. Somebody at Sim woke up because they were looking for a job and one day they went and applied for a job and they're like, hey, hey I'm worth getting paid $10. If that's what they want to do, by all means, like I said before, somebody will have to work at Sam's. When I go there, somebody has to load my car. Like, that's, that's how I see it, okay? I refuse to be one of the bottom people. I want to be one of the top people. That's what I want to do. That's, right. what, that's the example I want to but, set for uh, my families. But, Febby, okay? this, this, if, this example we drew out bottom, earlier, this example that we drew out earlier with the 10-10, you see this? With the 10-10-30, right? Mm -hmm. 10 who get 10 who mm -hmm. get 10. Correct. That proves that the majority of all people always have to be on the bottom layer. The majority you start, of- You always start at the bottom. There's nothing you do, you start at the top. Everyone starts start at, the at the bottom, but this model, mm -hmm. the way it is, the way we agreed that it is, where you get 10 who mm -hmm. get 10 who get 10, or five who get five who get five, or however you want to structure it, the majority mm -hmm. of all people will always be at the bottom. So how do you explain that? Well, why are they at the bottom? Well, were you not at the bottom at one point when you joined? I was at the bottom at one point. I'm not at the bottom anymore. Right. My point is the majority right. of all participants in this multi-level marketing structure will always be at the bottom because the, the bottom level is always expanding. So I, I, your question is not the – you're answering it, my question it, it with really, a question and like saying, why are they at the bottom? Why are you well, at the bottom? 
Why are they at the bottom? If you're at the bottom, you know what you need to go to do to get now, this. What we do is yeah. What you have than, to do, exactly. What I you're agree. talking about. I agree with you. What you have to you do. You follow the path. You get to the top. And what is There's the path? No, you don't start. What is the path? You let's say you do 10, 10, 30. That's exactly. Your you, you're proving right. my point, Febby. Go and do 10, how 10, 30. can Why everyone? Not? How how? So is it possible for everyone then? It, it's everybody that comes into the company. It is possible. Why it not is possible. It? So if there's a hundred thousand people possible in the company, for me, wasn't it? Just because it's possible for you doesn't mean it's possible for everyone. You're saying it's possible for How everyone. How is it not possible for everybody? I'm about to explain it. Let me finish. Mm -hmm. If mm -hmm. there's a hundred thousand people in the company, and all of them do ten, ten, thirty, that's all they got to do, right? Well, now mm -hmm. you have a million people. Well, let's say those million Great. people do ten, that's ten, thirty. That's a thriving 30. company. Now you have ten million people in the company. Now you're bigger than Apple. That now you're bigger correct. than Walmart. So now, yeah. wow. now those 10 million people recruit 10. Now you've got 100 million people. Now you're a country. Wow. Now those yep. 100 million people recruit 100 pe yep. or 10 people. Now you've got a correct. billion people. One seventh of the whole planet is in it. Then correct. you've got a billion people who recruit 10. Now you've got 10 billion people. 10 oh my billion. God. That's the whole world. Yeah, we've more than the whole world. We've got aliens and animals in the in the At in the company point, now yeah, too. The trees, man, it's crazy. It's beautiful. We got trees. We got bugs in the company. It's amazing. <laughs> so. Don't you see that it's impossible for the no, majority of let me let me let me tell for, you this for Michael. the majority of people we're, to even move up one level? We're still talking about reality versus expectation. Okay? This company has been around for as long as it has. Why is it do you think that there's, there's not that many people at the top? Not many people are willing to do what it takes. Not many people are willing to do the job. Okay? You find people that are willing. And again, this is it's an opportunity. And when we're talking about unlimited income potential, it's an opportunity for whoever decides. Hey, listen, man, I see what people are not doing. Let me go and do the opposite. Because guess what? Most people are comfortable making $1,000, $2,000 extra a month. Because the average person, let's say in the U.S., you're looking at an average of $50,000. Let's say you know $70,000. The average family makes about $4,000, $4,500 a month. These people, you help them make just five, five, you know, $1,000 extra, they're okay with it. Okay? Here's what I'm saying. A lot of people, that's what, that's what they're okay doing. Because do you know what it takes to, to do what you need to do to, to, to get to the top? If it was easy, everybody would have been at the top. Okay? Again, because it's not easy, no, not many people is going to do it. And because not many people is going to do it, then yes, a lot of people are going to be at the bottom. Not many people are willing to open a Walmart. What if everybody decided one day, hey, man, I'm going to go open a Walmart? But not many people are open to doing that as well. And because they're not doing that, they end up having to work for Walmart. Why, why is that not okay? How is that unfair? When you go to work at Walmart, you are told explicitly what you are going to get paid and that how, is and how much how much an hour of your time is worth in the Walmart ecosystem and exactly what you have to do. There is transparency. And during, okay with during, that. during this call alone, you have told mm -hmm. me it's about the amount of work you do. And you told me, oh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, most people to make a, a couple extra hundred bucks or an extra thousand bucks a month, you just said would be great for people, but I have been inside your company's Zoom calls. I have been inside mm -hmm. your company's meetings in person, and they will start with what you said. They will start by saying it's an amazing part-time opportunity, a couple extra hundred bucks a month, and then you realize, oh, wait, I'm only getting 25% commission, so even if I sold $4,000 of insurance a month, I'd only make 1000 That's probably going to take me so much time. I don't even have uh, – it, it doesn't really qualify as a side gig. And then you will say if you really want to get to the top – and you yourself attest, can attest to this. If you really want to get to the top, you have to be willing to do what it takes. 10, 10, 30. What I'm sh saying to you and what I've shown you now a couple times is that everyone doing the 10, 10, 30 is mathematically impossible. And the majority of all people will be in the bottom layer, meaning the majority of all people will be stuck at that 25% level. And as we established with the countless examples of the ice cream man and Walmart and McDonald's and Burger King, the likelihood that they are going to make those sales, direct sales, in a world where you can purchase insurance online, we have Amazon, we have Target, is laughable. As a matter of fact, and, and this brings me back to the very beginning, why I said most people lose money. If the majority of all people are always in the bottom layer, the amount that they might make is outweighed by the amount they spent on their licensing the amount they spent to join the company and the amount that they spent on events, training, back office, monthly fees. That is why I say 
99% of people lose money. And that's not just me being exaggerative. That's a real number. Every MLM, 99.7% right. annually lose money. And then next year, they are mostly replaced by a new crop of people who also lose money, and the top few people stay the but same. with these companies being around for so long, Marco, why is it that these companies are still around? If ev Why is it that every okay, year they're running a new group of people? Go so why are me. they still around? Have you heard of Bernie Madoff? No. So Bernie Madoff, it's wi he's widely regarded as the biggest Ponzi schemer of all time. So he was the most well-respected, well-decorated person in the financial industry, chairman of the NASDAQ. He was... Uh, on every like financial board and chair, you know, he was a chairperson of every reputable financial agency you can think of. He was found out in 2008 to have been running a Ponzi scheme for over 30 years, $64 billion Ponzi scheme. Anytime somebody tried to say something about his numbers don't make sense, how is he able to generate these returns every month and uh, never lose money? You know what people were told? He's been around for decades. He's partnered with this company and this company. He has all these licenses. He is so legit. There's no way he could be doing anything wrong. And it was up until, uh, I mean, as far as most people are concerned, it was the biggest Ponzi scheme of all time. I don't believe that. I believe the biggest Ponzi scheme of all time is multi-level marketing. So that to answer your question, just because something goes on for a long time doesn't mean that it is... Legit. Again, I hate to use Michael, this example. Slavery was legal for hundreds of years. Legality, we're not about whether this is legit or not. Lega I, legality I, does not equate to uh, ethics. We're not. We're not. We're not talking about whether this is legit or not. Like you I just asked me that. Legit. No, no, no. I ask you because you you had this this map that you drew. No, earlier. you said stop. Uh, you said how has it been around for so long? Ten people. You said how has right, it been no, around it, for it, so let, long? If let, it's a scam. Let me, let me go back to that. Let me go back to that. No, the question you, I'm you asking keep is, bouncing around and trying no, 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 to weave these around. webs you, of deception. You did not answer what I said. I you answered said, you. If everybody recruited ten people, okay, and then it's going to keep going to the point where there's nobody on earth to recruit, and that's what you said, okay. Now, what, how is it that this company has been around for so long? Every year they get a new batch of people. Why is it that they haven't reached the end of herp as of yet? This is the question I'm asking. Oh, I'll answer. Because every year there is a new crop of people graduating high school, people losing their job, people switching career paths. There's always a replenishing market of new Damn. people. For example, my, my best friend from high school who joined the company that you are in right now, he joined mm -hmm. because he was looking for something right out of high school, and he was recruited because he's told endless financial freedom, unlimited income, Lamborghini, whatever, and he joined the company, and then he left, and then there was a new group of 18 and 19-year-old kids next year who graduated and joined. You're actually proving my point. You're saying, why didn't we recruit You're the whole world mine. yet? Why didn't we recruit the whole world yet, right? Yeah, yeah. That well, goes to, there's a new batch that, of people. That goes to prove how senseless this business model is. Because if it actually worked the way you are saying it should work, we should have surpassed the entire population of the earth long ago, just with your company. There's over a thousand the MLM companies people? just in the US. So what it begs the, the question. What? What about the new batch of people? There's always a new batch of people. If all of that new batch was successful in doing 10, 10, 30, recruiting 10 people, there wouldn't, we would quickly recruit the entire planet before we even got a new batch. What I'm showing you is that it's impossible. That is why we haven't recruited the entire population. Marco, your your that, question, that, your question serves to prove my point and, and back up my point. No, it, it doesn't serve to prove it, but again, I do see where you're coming from. How um, can you we, see we where I'm coming this, from, from if disagree. you deny it? You see where I'm coming well, from, I, but you think I it's wrong. Because I don't agree. I see where you're coming from, I just don't agree So explain with where it. I'm coming from. It doesn't make sense. You're saying there's a new batch of people, and if everybody at one point were to like do exactly what is told, and this and, and this, like the, every everybody would have been NWFG at one point. Yeah. Is that what you? That's what you're saying, right? Yes. But I'm also saying why not? Why? Why? W, the company has been around for for as long as it has, and we still find a new batch every year. So obviously, your point it doesn't stand. I don't agree with because I, I I can see it the other way. You see it a certain way, which again. I, I see where you're coming from. Do I agree with you? No. Because, again, there's college here. You know how many people start college and they quit? <laughs> right? There's people quit high school. Why is it high school around? Why is, why is it that at this point everybody hasn't been through high school as of yet? Again, those are, those, are, uh, disagree. those are false equivalents 
fallacies when you compare people dropping out of uh, high school, university. Those are not business I, opportunities that were wait, pitched Michael, to people under the false pretense that they can earn millions of dollars. You also, hey, 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 you I'm also, it. let me finish. You also don't have to recruit new students in order to rise up the ranks of university and get your degree. You also, actually, uh, yes, actually, you don't have to, <laughs> there is not a, there is not a disproportionate amount, an ever expanding chain of new students on the bottom who all spend money so the top students can earn money. It's a completely ridiculous, uh, false apples to oranges comparison that does not hold up. Well, let me, let me tell you this. You ever heard of the military? I love this one, actually. Go ahead. Perfect. And, and why is it that they haven't recruited the whole world as of yet? They recruit, don't they? I just want to, before I answer this, and this is one I've heard many times, so I'm totally prepared mm -hmm. to answer I, this. I know you've heard all of it. I mean, but before I, I answer up, this, I, I just want to ask you, do you see how stupid that sounds? I don't see it. I wouldn't ask you. You don't see I how? Okay, see. then I'm going to do you the favor of and answering. I'm, Your question mm -hmm. is, why hasn't the military recruited the whole earth yet? Yes. Does the military have standards for who join, who, who gets to be in the military, the Navy, whatever? Uh, I would think they do. Right. right. Do you think everyone could be in the military? Do you think anyone could be in the military? Do you think anyone could be part of WFG? I do. Well, and that's what, that's, see, we, we got to agree to disagree. <laughs> <laughs> we just, we literally so just you don't do think, that. so listen, do you mm -hmm. think everyone could be in the military? Yeah, you do. So even if I was, you know, four foot eight and I was pretty overweight, I could be in the military. They would recruit me. They probably they probably wouldn't recruit you, but you can be in the military. So how could I be in the military if they didn't recruit me? Hey, listen, you can be. They just don't recruit you. Just like you can be in WFG, but I don't recruit you. So you're saying that you could join WFG and uh, not be recruited? Of course you can't join WFG. Well, you can't be. You can't join WFG and not be recruited. Exactly. So, right. L listen first before you Can try you to join come the back. Without no, being no, no. Listen first before you try to just quip back and disagree with me. The military doesn't accept everyone, right? We agree on that. We don't either. But go ahead. Okay, but just let me finish. The military doesn't uh, doesn't recruit every single person, right? Not everyone makes Correct. it, right? Correct. Correct. Do soldiers in the military recruit more soldiers so that they can unlock? better guns and higher pay? Is that how wars are won? It would be fun if they did, right? Just answer the question. Yes, they do. So soldiers advance through the ranks of the military. You go from being a, a cadet to being a commander to being a sergeant, whatever, by well, recruiting you could be more. A you could be a recruiter for the military. Is that how you advance through the ranks of the military by recruiting more soldiers? Not necessarily how soldiers? you advance, but you get you get bonuses, you get you get a few a few benefits for recruiting. Do you become a commander in the military because you recruited people into the military? I, I'm not in the military. I don't know. So, but I'm I'm using your example, Fabi. I'm trying. I'm playing on. Well, my example is they recruit. And they, there's, there's a recruiter. I'm a they recruiter. They recruit, are, but they don't. Mm -hmm. Again, now, now they get this, benefits to recruit. This is another like obfuscation I that I that I run into, where you guys will try to change the definition or cling to the definition of the word and say, "Well, the military recruits." The military recruits for a specific purpose. The military does not recruit so that that recruit can recruit who can recruit another recruit to recruit to recruit to recruit. That is not what they're doing. When I say recruiting, when I criticize recruiting in MLM, I am talking about the endless chain of recruiting that is directly so, correlated to your advancement or your compensation in the company. In, in so your you're company, not recruiting. in your company, you're against... in order to go, you're at rank four, right? How do you go to rank five? How many people do you need in your organization to go rank five? It, well, actually, it has nothing to do with, with people. It has something it has to do with the points, the points that I do. like the. Okay, but you said at the beginning of this that the number of people you have contributes the, to your points. The first, the first level is the only level that you have to recruit really to get. Answer the question f head on. How many I, people, I I don't how many people would you need to, to get do, to the next level? Do the math in your head about the point, the conversion to points. How many mm -hmm. people would you need to recruit? To go from where you are now, level four to level five, how many people would you need in, in your downline? I don't need to recruit. I just need to help families. If I go help enough families, I get to the next level. How many people would you need in your organization 
to go to level five? You need 10. I already have 10. I have over 10. Okay. How I don't many people need would you recruit. need? How many people would you need in order to get to level five? You need 10, 10, people, 10 people that are licensed. To go to level five. And you're at level four, right? Right. So you would need, so you have less than 10 now, right? I have over 10. This is what I'm saying. It has nothing to do with people that I recruit. It has okay. to do with families that I help. So what is the, what is the qualification to get to level six? How many people would you need below you to get to level six? You need points. How many families do you help? Okay, but we already established that the way that you, one of the ways you can get points is by recruiting people. And you've been pretty right. it's transparent. It's the easiest way to get points. You've been pretty, yeah, it's the easiest way. You've been pretty transparent about the fact that you're not shy when it comes to recruiting. So oh, if no, you, I want to, re if anybody wants so, to be recruited, so if definitely, you wanted to, talk. So if you wanted to get to level five from recruiting, how many people mm -hmm. would you need? That's assuming I have to recruit. I just told you I don't need to. You don't right? have to. We're going families. in circles. You don't have to. But let's say that you right. wanted but to you, use you're, recruiting you're to get to level that five. I need to, I'm asking that's you. That's why you're asking me to answer a question. I'm losing my how patience. Many people, I need to how many people would you need if you wanted to get the points from recruiting to go to level five? How many people would you need to get to level five? If you wanted to use recruiting to get those points, I'm not saying you have to. But if you wanted to, if you chose to use recruiting, so that's, that's assuming I recruit somebody, they get, they get policy. Sure. Sure. That's what you're saying. I'm asking okay. a question and I've asked it probably um, six times depend, now. Depends on the policies they go with. I would need, I would need like a good hundred. You would need a good 100 people mm -hmm. in the military. Do you think that the way somebody goes from Lieutenant to commander is because they have X amount of soldiers under them? Do you think they are using points? It's, it's about doing X amount of things they have they have requirements to get to the next level Just right like and do you think do you think one of those requirements even one is points that are that come from recruiting more soldiers we can't have the same requirements in the military as we do here okay exactly like, that, that even exactly so why the fuck mm -hmm. did you bring up the military because, as an because example the military recruits we were talking about recruiting but the, exactly but the military does not do this endless chain recruiting the military does not yes, they incentivize do. their yeah, they soldiers do. to the go up by how many year. recruits they have they recruit every year that's not what I mean okay. by endless just, chain. What not, I mean by endless chain is, is that in the lifetime of one soldier's career in the military is their entire career predicated on recruiting soldiers who recruit soldiers who recruit soldiers. That's what I mean by endless chain. We're, we're not the military. So why we're then did the you make the comparison with the military? We take the comparison because we're talking about recruiting. I can't take a comparison with Walmart. Walmart yeah, but then when I dissect that, we're, but then when no, I dissect no, that, you say, oh, it's not the it. same. You've done this now, you know, we're going to watch, people are going to watch this back and they are going to see you try to make comparisons with Sam's and then see you later flip flop and go, but we're not like Sam's. Then they're going to see you try to make a comparison with, with right, the military let's, let's, let's and then they're going to see, with, with and then they're going to see you say, oh, well, we're not like the military. You keep putting your foot in your mouth at every different example that you bring up because you are realizing as you talk to me, every That's single comparison recruit. you bring up is complete that fucking nonsense. But what you're saying is nonsense as well. This the no, it's not. Recruit. You just we're won't listen. About recruiting. I recruit the military recruit. This is Every what time we, we I can make compare a point, recruiting. You deflect and That's go on to point. some other thing That's and try point. to change the meaning of words to be That's clever. That's your point. It doesn't make any sense. That's your point. You can't compare this. You can't compare. If we're talking about recruiting, we're talking about recruiting is recruiting. That's all it is. Okay? We can't compare about recruiting to do what? It has, this is not the military. But the military recruits, doesn't it? That's not a point. The point is we're talking about Then recruiting. you shouldn't have said it. No, we, the military recruits, don't they? If they recruit, we'll recruit as well. That's a similarity. They the recruit, word, we recruit. The word, the word recruit recruiting, to the word recruiting, to go kill people. the word recruiting is the only similarity. When I'm trying to break it down and point out the difference between the recruiting you do and the recruiting mm -hmm. the military does, it's like, right. it's, it's like two different recruiting. Pardon me? 
It's two different recruiting because they recruit exactly. to go do military things. Exactly. It's two different. To do financial services. Exactly. Things. So they're not comparable. So you keep saying, but it's recruiting. It's recruiting. Is, is it recruiting? Even, even with the Sam's Club example, I, I was trying to talk to you about how your company is in direct sales. Mm -hmm. You said, well, at Sam's, they have sales representatives. You're just doing these little language games to cling to the meanings of certain words to be like, gotcha. And when I go into further detail and explain why your analogies are complete nonsense, you go, okay, well, let me, why don't we talk about this? Or let me ask you this. Or are we talking about expectations? Or are we talking about reality? You're not even taking the time to listen to what I'm saying and let it register. You are just so quick to jump to the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. This is pure cognitive dissonance in front of me. You know that what I am saying, if you, if you sat with it, if you didn't just jump to respond right away, it would make sense. And the other day on the phone when we spoke privately, this happened a few times. So maybe you're only doing this now because we're, we have an audience. But the other day when we spoke on the phone, there was a couple of these examples that you gave. Recruiting, corporations, everything is multi-level, you said to me. And I would explain to you, well, no, uh, these comparisons actually have these, these flaws in them. There was a few moments where you sort of chuckled and there was a moment of silence. And I let that silence breathe so that it could register because I'm trying to help what you realize what you are a part of. And what here on this stream, time? you just keep relentlessly firing back with, with, before you even know what you're going to say. You just start on a new phrase. What were we talking about at the time? When I pause, I'm curious. You would pause after every example that you gave to me com false equivalence comparison. Every time I knocked one of those down and disproved it, you would stop for a moment and chuckle and go, oh, <laughs> I see. And I would let you, I was doing you the courtesy. No, I, I did that because I figured just like this here, the conversation is not going anywhere. You have what you believe. I have what I believe. It's okay. not even as I, what I believe, okay? You believe, hey, man, this is how it is, okay? Which is completely fine. Like I said, I'm not here to go against your belief. It's okay? not a belief. I, I don't believe. Believe means faith. Believing without evidence. I don't that's, believe. That's, I don't believe. That's where you're at. You're, you're saying going to the beach and you don't get the sunlight and like the, the whole different. You're talking about expectations and, and not reality. Okay. I'm telling you the reality of this business because guess what? This is, this is the business I'm in. You're, you're on the outside looking in. A lot of things you don't get to understand. You don't get it. Okay. Which is okay. completely fine. I'm not trying to get you to understand anything. Okay. I brought in military because we we're talking about recruiting. I could have brought Jesus. And Jesus then when I and the then when I showed you how it's not the same thing, you went, "Well, we're it's not the military." Not, we don't, so we you don't completely get back to down. Do the same thing, but you still get recruited. There's a few things to understand, Marco. CEOs are recruited, employees are hired. You talk to a lot of employees, and that's completely fine. If you're okay with doing what employees does, go work at, at McDonald's, go work at at Walmart. That's completely okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay, somebody got to cut the grass. Somebody got to bring in the mail. If I refuse to be part of that, then that's, that's the decision I decide to make. If somebody wants to just do everything that like what normal people do, that's, that's completely fine. This business is not for everybody. You are not obligated to come here and do anything. Okay. But the products that we help with, everybody needs those products. Everybody. Okay. If they, if they don't, if you use money at, at some point, you need to at least understand how it works. And this is what we focus on. This is not a company that just recruits. It's important for you to understand. Here's why. Listen, I got recruited into this business because I wanted to be recruited. Nobody went into my pocket and took money, paid for my license, got me licensed and do this. No, somebody got paid to train me. And guess what? I appreciate that they did what they did for me because they got paid to help, to teach. Okay. We have, we have a, a lot of people from different backgrounds that are doing this. Are you in a way claiming that you're smarter than those people? If they were able to see it and now they're in a position where they're doing great, great. Like I said, I do understand where you're coming from. It, it, listen, by all means, continue to educate, educate. Well, let's not say educate. Continue to do what you do. It's, it's always good to have people seeing things from a different point of view. Okay? But, it's, you know, that, that's completely fine. I do this. I know what I do. I know, what I do. I know the change that I bring into family's life. Okay? I, I've sat with countless of people that, you know, countless times would tell me, man, I'm glad I got to meet you. I've seen people cry because now I have this guy who was supposed to retire in 2007 and he lost so much money in the market that he can't retire. This person is thanking me that we're able to put his, his money in place down that he will never ever lose money ever again. 
Okay. Now, yes, you could talk about recruiting. Listen, recru recruiting is not for everybody. People are, CEOs are recruited. I'd rather be a CEO. Employees are hired. If you want to be an employee, you're, you know, whatever, that's completely fine. Go and do that. I'm not I'm an employee. I'm, I'm actually, open. I actually am a self-employed business you're owner, self ironically. And if you, if you understand there's a difference between self-employed and a business owner, I used to think I was, I was, um, I was good at being self-employed as well. Okay. Income is a lot limited. I don't, I want unlimited uh, potential. I know you have a problem okay. with the word, but I'll use it again. Well, I want unlimited potential. Fabi, can I ask you something I, before you go? I have to get going, but let's yeah, make it fast. I just want to ask you something. Have you ever had a business or a job or anything opportunity where you had to convince people that it wasn't a scam? You really think I'm convincing you this is not a scam? Well, we were talking about that quite in depth near the beginning. No, you were, asking me, you were asking me why do they do a certain things. So that girl that... Uh, sat with you recently or had the meeting with you who uh, gave your information to me. She had shown you the videos that I made about the company because she wanted to do her own research and that's how you came across it, right? Correct. Have you Correct. ever had a similar experience in any other job or company you've been involved with where you were trying yes. to get someone involved and yes. they decided, oh, you know what, this is actually a scam and you had to try to push back against that? Yes. What was I, it? I, with my trucking company, I had a bad review one time. This guy went and looked us up, and guess what? He came to me. He was like, I don't want to work for such a company. And I had to tell him this is what we stand for, and this is what we're about. So, yeah, no, that doesn't apply to me. Got it. And the last thing uh, I just wanted to address was you saying that if you work with money, then um, what you do is, is helpful, right? If you, if you work with money, what was your exact phrase? If you work with money, then you need what we do? Correct. Okay, so... I just want to say that uh, that is an iteration of something I've heard from every MLM company, whether they sold phone plans or shampoo. If they sell shampoo, they'll say, people's hair never strop, stops growing. There's always going to be a need for what we do. If they sell phone 100%. plans, they say, you would never not use your cell phone. There's always going to be a need for what we do. That do you is, not do, you, do you not there is soap? there is ne a... there is no thing that you could point to that genuinely right. truly has an unlimited uh, amount of customers. There is not an unlimited amount of people looking to buy life insurance. There is not an unlimited amount of people who are in a position to be able to invest. So I reject your mission statement of saying, if you use money, then you need what we do. It's absolutely not true. I mean, that's, that's your stance. Again, I'm not here to prove what you sure. think. Well, look, I'm, I'm I do appreciate you what, taking what the time to, to chat with me. And I think it's been insightful uh, for, for people watching, whether they, uh, disagree with me or they disagree with you, I think it has been uh, good. And I appreciate that we were able to have a respectful, uh, uh, conversation. I really do. Yeah. By all means, man. Thanks a lot for, for Thank bringing you, me bro. on as well. All right. All right. Have a good one. Enjoy the rest of your night. Yeah. You know, uh, I saw in the, the chat this, I think his name was Logan. Logan, if you're still watching, I mean, for such a busy businessman, you sure had a lot of time to watch my stream today. But uh, if, if Logan would like to come on and have a conversation with me too, I saw a lot of uh, false equivalencies that he was posting in the, in the chat too. I, I would love to uh, have a conversation with him as well. Let me, um, I, I want to look and see if anybody uh, supported while I was doing that. I didn't have the notifications popping up because I didn't want them to interrupt. But 
Um, okay, no, I didn't miss anything, so all good. But wow, you know, literally wow. It's it's unbelievable, really. You look at it, you look at what we're doing with World Financial Group. Frankly, it's tremendous. Wow. Yeah, man's watched dodgeball before the debate. It really is. Uh, thank you. Hello, my friends. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It really is. Again, I have said before, and I don't want you guys to get frustrated. It. Um, I have said before that the purpose of these debates is not to actually change their minds because I know that that's not going to happen. If anything, what these debates serve to do is show how absolutely in the sunken place, in the matrix, and out of touch with reality these people are. I mean, it was such a great example when I was asking him about the ice cream man thing and trying to make the point about market saturation. And I said, is it better? Actually, a stunning moment if you go back. When I said to him, is it better to be the only ice cream man on the block? Or is it be better to have three ice cream trucks on the block trying to steal the, the market away from you? And you know what his response was? Ice cream melts. He wasn't, truly wasn't even listening. But uh, man, and thumbs up the ting too, because there's like a hundred of you that haven't clicked like. And I did, so many times during that, I wanted, to, I wanted to jump in and go, guys, click thumbs up the ting, click like on the stream. What's going on? Thumbs up the ting. And uh, I didn't because I was trying to be, you know, pay attention, but wow. Wow, man. Thank hey, you, less than three. Thank you, European cutie. I appreciate that. Whew. Marco, what's three plus three? Febby, potato. Yeah, yeah. Just such deflections. I mean, if also you can go back and you can look at it and see how I would, he would bring up something and say, oh, well, it's like this. And then when I explain why it's not like that, he goes, no, it's not like These that. These people only care about the money. Ice cream melt. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, uh, Digital Acetone. I really appreciate that. It's really um, system brings the people. So true. Yeah, man, it is absolutely. And, you know, I I'm glad I. Thank you, KB. Coconut ice cream. Yeah. I filmed a video before this stream. And it's a video that I've been planning to do for a long time, and I, I finally created it. And it's called, it's simply called, What is a Pyramid Scheme? And I, I thought it was necessary for me to film that video because there are still so many people like Febby who deny that their MLM is even an MLM. They'll say it's direct sales. You won't even get them to admit that it's an MLM, let alone a pyramid scheme. In the old days, in, back in the day, before multi-level marketing was such a uh, widely admonished term, they would say, we're not a pyramid scheme, we're multi-level marketing. Now they say, we're not multi-level marketing because they know there's a bad stigma around it. We're not multi-level marketing, we're direct sales, network marketing, affiliate marketing, social selling, and so on. So I created this video um, that you'll see soon called, What is a Pyramid Scheme? Where I explain what is a Ponzi scheme, what is a pyramid scheme and what is an MLM? And at the end of the video, spoiler alert, we conclude that a pyramid scheme is a Ponzi scheme with extra steps and an MLM is a pyramid scheme. So an MLM is a Ponzi scheme with extra steps. All of these things that they have there to hide the truth, points, ranks, uh, compensation plans, all of this stuff is what I mean by say, when I say extra steps. The products, well, I, I, strongly, uh, I strongly sense that Febby was not telling me the truth when he said that when he did his 10-10-30, helping 10 families, aka selling 10 policies, and recruiting 10 people in 30 days, I, I strongly, uh, I don't believe that the 10 people he recruited were not also the 10 people he sold the policy to. This is how they cover up getting paid to recruit. We don't, we don't get paid to recruit. That would be a pyramid scheme. But when you recruit someone and they buy the starter kit or they buy the insurance or they buy the w shampoo as part of them joining, we'll pay you a commission for that. It's just shuffling around words 
to hide the truth. We don't pay you to recruit. No, that would be a pyramid scheme. But when you recruit someone and as a mandatory purchase, they have to buy this starter kit that we're selling. I'm not saying this is the case of WFG, but when, you, when we recruit you and you buy this starter kit, we'll pay you for that. So they paid money to join the opportunity, like, like a Ponzi scheme, and you gave them a box of goop, you know, bottles of goop, shampoo, protein powder, whatever it is, and you get a cut of that. So the only, the only marginal difference that is making it a cut and dry Ponzi scheme is that you have this cheaply produced worth nothing starter kit. And when you subtract the cost of that starter kit, you basically ended up with, you got a tiny commission for recruiting someone in, in uh, the case of the example I gave with Febby in his company. If you're at the bottom rank, you only get 25% for a sale. So you take away the cost of that starter kit and you take it, you take that from what it costs the recruit to buy. Let's say they paid $500 for the starter kit. That starter kit probably only cost 50 to a hundred dollars. If that to manufacture. So you're left with $400 that goes to the company. A tiny little bit goes to the, uh, the recruiter and who got rich, the company. But they can say, well, we didn't pay them to recruit. They didn't pay just to join. That would be a pyramid scheme. We gave them a product. It's actually even harder than a Ponzi scheme. Ponzi scheme, you just, oh, you're going to pay me 20% a month? Okay, sure. Here's the money. Every month, just reinvest it. And you just sit and wait to collect your return. Eventually, it will collapse, yeah. But all you got to do is kick back. MLM is even more impossible because you're paying to join, thinking you're gonna get these amazing returns, financial freedom, time freedom, whatever. And now you also have a starter kit. So instead of just waiting to collect your return, you also now have this added burden of recruiting people, selling stuff, monthly expenses for more products, back office software, events, trainings, uh, samples, on and on and on. So it's like, it's really genius. It's a genius crime. It's a Ponzi scheme where you continue to pay in every month and you are told that returns are up to you in this impossible to beat game. So much more impossible than a Ponzi scheme. Ponzi scheme, what did you have to do? Give, over, give your money and wait. Bernie Madoff, great example. And the irony is Ponzi schemes are illegal, but MLM is not illegal. Make it make sense. So this is, the, this is the purpose of my channel. This is why everyone's clicking thumbs up on the ting, right? This is why we're supporting it, right? Thumbs up the ting. Because almost 100 of y'all, literally like 94 of y'all have not clicked like on the stream. And that's, that's crazy. I'm just going to say it's free to do. It only takes half a second to do it. So that's kind of crazy. Uh, the Nerds Loft, thank you for the dono. He said, do entry level... Do entry-level soldiers get promotions and bigger guns for recruiting? Febby, yes. <laughs> Insane. Insane. It took him forever to answer uh, the question about how many people would he need to move on to level five. It is sad. I, I, feel, I feel bad. I do feel that he is brainwashed. He hung himself not only on the military comparison, he hung himself on the... Burger King and uh, McDonald's comparison. He hung himself in the beginning when he said, we're not a scam, we're partnered with all these companies. He hung himself when he said, uh, it's not a scam, I have a license. I fucking bodied every point. It's not a scam, we're partnered with all these big companies. And I said, is a convenience store partnered with Coca-Cola? Do you think Coca-Cola is privy to the daily, you know, day-to-day -day conduct of every convenience store and grocery store that sells its products? No, they don't give a fuck. You're a vendor. Then he moves on. Well, I have a license. You know, he doesn't agree or disagree. He just moves on. Well, I have a government license. And I said, my driver's license is a government license. I paid to do my driver's test. I paid to get it. I paid to renew it every year. Does that mean that because I have a government license and drunk driving is illegal, that it's impossible, that I could never do it? You know? 
There's no way we're scamming. I have a government insurance license. Why would the government give me an insurance license if I was going to scam? Well, why would the government give me a driver's license if I was going to drink and drive? See how fucking stupid all of these examples are? I'm not saying he is stupid, but these people are so brainwashed because they are being told these lies that sound sensible on their face. They sound clever. Oh, well, the military recruits, the NBA recruits, and they cling to the meaning of this word recruit. Well, everything is multi-level. Everything has multiple levels, and they refuse to go any deeper into what that actually means. They refuse to look at it uh, from an actual critical thinking view. When they talk about recruiting, everyone recruits. I say, yeah, the military recruits, but does the military recruit so that those recruits can recruit? And are those recruits moving up through the ranks of the military because of recruiting? Is that how the military wins wars? Is that how the military gets paid? Is that how the military unlocks bigger guns and tanks and planes? Well, now when you really start to compare them fairly, the whole thing breaks down. Oh, well, and on and on and on, dude. Let me ask you this, sir. Can you just answer Marco's question? Yeah, yeah. Let me ask you. Let me ask you this. It's like this, you know. Yeah, he did almost bring Jesus in it. Uh, it's all exactly, Dave. It's all coached through duplication. If you guys watch my stream the other night, and I highly recommend you go and watch this if you haven't. We talked about one of the OGs of the MLM industry, Dexter Yeager from Amway, and in this live stream. It is called Me, Dexter Yeager, The Richest Man in Amway. It was four days ago. Go watch it. It's pretty short. It's an hour, 45 minutes. And there's chapters, so you can jump around if you want to. But in that, we show how in an old interview Dexter Yeager, Dexter Yeager did from like 1982, I think, he's talking about stinking thinking, J-O-Bs, saying basically a, a, an earlier version of all of these same analogies and senseless flaws, logical flaws that we are hearing in every company to this day, even from people like Febby. And it's sad because they don't see it. They have so, they have drank the, um, you know, they've just believed everything. <laughs> the Nerds Loft says, Marco, would it make sense for a McDonald's to open next to a McDonald's? Febby, yes. <laughs> you know, he wouldn't even listen to me. And I'm trying to help him. That's the biggest irony is we had people like uh, Logan uh, in the chat, Febby's uh, associate, saying, oh, yeah, people love to hate and bitch and moan like I'm a hater, like I'm doing something bad out here. You know, in my new video, you are going to see I include a clip of this piece of propaganda that the company paid to create at the corporate level, and it's called Consider the Source. If you know the new video, if you know the focus of the new video that's coming out, if you know this company, you can search this video up yourself. It's called Consider the Source. And in this video, it starts out with, you can, you can find a lot of, uh, you know, fake news basically on the internet, you wouldn't believe how much ad revenue is generated by people who make salacious websites just to you know, make a quick buck. And then it goes on, uh, if you search moon landing scam, you'll find all these results. Just because you saw it on the internet doesn't make it true. There's a lot of bad rumors about our company. People say it's a scam, but did you know that we this and this and this and this? What other industry what other company do you know that has to go to such great lengths to try and prove to people that it is not a scam? Really insane. Johnny says, thank you on 61K. Thank you, Johnny. I appreciate it. And, and yeah, uh, Dave Vaughn had several great comments, but one of them was uh, how these people are so, they feel that they are saving the world. You know, and, and they have all these confirmation biases. Like when he says, again, this is a genius, genius reason for an MLM to use ins insurance, life insurance as its product instead of shampoo or protein bars or whatever. Because in the event that someone actually does die and they get paid out from a policy they bought through you, you can say to yourself, and it would be true, wow, I really protected that family. And that helps you to look away 
from all the harm that is being done, the incalculable harm that far outweighs the good that you did by recruiting people into this system where by design, most people will lose money. And I think I did an adequate job showing and explaining that with the uh, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10 model. Insane. You know, it's hard to stay sane doing this, man. It really is. Specs complimenting my B cups. Thank you, Specs. My my aunt was telling me that my breasts are uh, growing, and I said, "Yeah, but you can you can tell that it's muscle, not fat, right? Like my chest has been growing because I've been hitting that bench press crazy, right?" She's like, "I don't know." I just noticed your breasts. I was like, wow, okay. Panda says he hung himself when he played queen d5 on move six. Exactly. The making it up as you go debate strategy. Yeah, and it's very telling. You go back and you watch it and uh, you see that he, um, you know, just starts talking before I'm even done, really. He's not listening. He knows he's out of his depth deep down. Anyways, Trevor says, do you have to pay to renew your driver's license every year in Canada? Uh, my mistake. I, I was I meant my insurance, but you do have to pay uh, every few years to renew the driver's license. You know. Appreciate you watching. Heather says that was an excellent stream. Thank you. Thank you guys. Uh, Febby really went down the MLM checklist. So true. So true. Panda says more incline upper chest. Yeah, maybe I got to even it out. It's just incline with my shoulder. I dislocated my shoulder back in December, so doing incline still sort of is uncomfortable. So, and I've been doing push-ups, but. Yeah. So true. Sad. So sad. Anna Marie says, the military recruits one time. They don't make new recruits do the recruiting. Exactly. Same thing with uh, when he tried to use affiliate, affiliate marketing as an example. And I told him, yeah, you know what? I love that. I have an affiliate link for Ponzinomics in my description. Go cop it. Go cop it. The MLM, the anti-MLM Bible. Chunky boy. Uh, I have an affiliate link for Ponzinomics in my description, but those people who go and buy it, it's a one and done. I'm not recruiting people to sign up under me to also sell the link to, you know, the affiliate link to Ponzinomics. And when they sign up under me, I get a higher commission from Amazon because I had 10 recruits and that translated to 500 points, which translated to a 15% commission instead of 10 and on and on and on with the nonsense. Nonsense. Let me, I'm going to refresh my screen here. And I, right now my screen says 270 viewers, 170 likes. If I review it and there is not at least 250 likes, boy, oh boy, are we going to be in trouble, y'all. Boy, oh boy, are we going to be in trouble. Okay, hold on. Um, watch it. Dexter Yeager is a made man. I think Febby might have doubts and his upline was there to keep him in line. I think if that was true, his upline wouldn't have even let him do this. I think if anything, that guy was his cross line or maybe even his down line. Dave said, you did great, Marco. Keeping it to his experience and not losing it with the deflective analogies is a good tactic. Thank you. I appreciate it. You know, and I, I always, if you notice, I always let them control the narrative. And then I, you know, decisively cut down their false equivalents. Go, the Dominic Izzo debate too. When he talks about, thank you, Lucy and Voldy, thank you. In the Dominic Izzo debate, remember when he's like, if I go to the strip club and the stripper tells me that she's in love with me and she wants to marry me and I give her all my money, whose fault was that? And he really thought he had like a zinger. He really, he really thought that that was a, where is it? Gotcha. He really thought that was a gotcha. And then it's like, but did you get recruited under her to become a stripper? Was it this unlimited income opportunity that you were presented? Did you then also have to go recruit other strippers? Is she getting paid solely off recruiting you? And that increased how much commission she got? And it's like, again, you can just see the nonsense a mile away if you are perceptive enough to just stop and listen for a second and not get washed away by the glitz and glam and... Uh, income claims and lifestyle claims. And I have a Lamborghini and I, I was born in, on a dirt floor in Mexico. And now I came to this country and I've finally made something of myself because this is the American dream. <laughs> you know, and also with Dominic's stripper analogy, the, uh, 
the thing that is being sold to you, which is the stripper's affection, whether it's genuine or not, that is a real thing. It, it's, it's there in front of you. You can see it. In MLM, you, it can't be said that people are left to their own devices and people are making an informed decision that was their choice because what they are being told is available to them doesn't exist. Oh yeah, it's an unlimited income potential and you can, you're your own business owner and you're running an agency. That's not true. There is no such thing as an unlimited income potential. It's passive income. No, it's not passive income. You're your own business owner. No, you're not your own business owner. As a 1099 contractor, equivalent legally to a pizza delivery guy. And on and on and on and on. Truly the matrix. <laughs> Fluffy Mink says, you have the patience of a Zen master. Ah, that was, that was the least patient I've been. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, that was a funny moment too when he said, that's a great book, I've never read it. He recommended Ponzinomics without even having ever read it. And remember when I asked him, I was like, oh yeah, have you read it? Oh, I started to, but you don't fucking have that book. You don't, five by five, Febby. Great book, I've never read it. Incline with dumbbells, got you. Make sure to hit decline, press, and flies to get that lower chest. Got you, got you. Let me see. Mars says, I have hypermobile shoulders, hips, and wrists. Chest stuff makes me nervous. Take it easy. Thank you, thank you. Panda, would you rather have 100% of a dollar or 10% of a million? Yeah, it, that reminds me that when he said that, that reminded me of when uh, I've seen MLM presenters do this several times where they're like, would you rather have a million dollars in cash right now or a penny doubled every day for 30 days? That's why it's so important to recruit because when it compounds, you wouldn't believe the results. <laughs> so dumb. So dumb. <sighs> the bulls on that guy. Yeah, I can't believe I made it through the entire debate. This was brutal. Also, you notice he said the same things that Alejandro said in my PHP debate. Uh, I'm from, you know... I'm from the Latino community. Those people aren't educated about it. We, you know, we spend money on this and that, but we need to educate them about da-da-da. Febby did the same thing. Oh, well, I'm Haitian, and the Haitian community, they're not educated about this. These people really believe that they are helping people. It's insane. It's insane. We are witnessing, we are living in the midst of, and, and hopefully we are living at the tail end of the biggest financial fraud and commercial cult in human history. It's really, once you read this book, once you read this book, you will understand that things like the Jonestown Massacre, where all those people, you know, mass suicide, was nothing in comparison when it comes to cult harm. Bernie Madoff, the biggest Ponzi scheme in history, $64 billion, it's unfathomable, is not even close to being comparable to this trillion dollars annually. That's the conservative, conservative estimate for what all MLMs are doing globally. Mind you, only around 20% of all the MLM revenue comes from the USA. That means that the people who are being hit hardest are people in Asia, Africa, India, etc. Yeah. Never heard you say I'm losing my patience in a debate before. Yeah, I was losing my patience because at least the other people have the courtesy to say some bullshit to me. This guy just wouldn't even answer. Debate bingo. Yeah, we should make a debate bingo. Uh, in the Discord, I'm going to put the link to the Discord here in the description. Um, in the Discord, definitely put your uh, recommendations for what should be on the debate bingo. And speaking of that new video I have coming out, not the, um, not the what is a pyramid scheme one, the big one that I've been, uh, that I've been alluding to, that I've been working on since January. That video is really going to be uh, something historic and something very special. I really believe that. So I was actually talking to CoffeeZilla today who he put out the third part of his $500 million Ponzi scheme investigation that, that he did. 
Because that, that probably has over a million views already. It's, it came out this morning. Yep, 1.3 million views in 12 hours. What a fucking monster. 45-minute uh, video he dropped. Insane. Um, I was talking to him today about this video, and I'm going to send it to him uh, when I'm finished with it to get his thoughts and make, make any final changes, and um, I hope he likes it. So I know you guys are going to like it. I know you guys are going to like it. Logan really said his business was recession proof. He's correct, but it's not because his business is a good business. His business, like every MLM, is recession proof. And uh, Nathan in my ACN video says his business is recession proof as well. And I give the same answer, which is that it's true. The reason MLM businesses are recession proof, as a matter of fact, they actually, as Nathan said, boom in the down economy. Nathan says, my business booms in the down economy. The reason that is, is because when the economy is down and we're in a recession, that means more people are struggling, more people are vulnerable, more people are susceptible to some flashy, charismatic con man who says, I'll got, I've got the thing for you. I'm going to put you in business for yourself. And, and then they get recruited into a pyramid scheme where they lose money. I mean, the only reason anyone ever gets scammed is because they are trying to get it too fast. They're trying to get something too fast. That's the only reason. So, or because, I mean, MLMs take it a step further where you might not necessarily even be desperate. You're just trusting your friend or relative, which is uh, doubly, quadruply sin more sinister. Dave Vaughn says 40% of MLM revenue comes from Asia. I mean, so, so sad. Spec says, dude, the third part was so good. What are you talking about? Oh, we got to buy this Peter Mingle's uh, eBay tape for sure. I don't even know how I would play a tape though. Also, is it coming directly from Peter? LOL, the review on this says 99.7% positive from this retailer, which is funny because he's promoting something that has a 99.7% loss rate. Oh, the third part of CoffeeZilla's thing. My bad. I'm an idiot. Tinkle Tommy, Slow Drip Donnie. Try incline machine presses or cable presses. I have shoulder issues and those help. Okay, okay. Incline machine presses. I, I really don't like dec decline bench. Honestly, bro, like you're telling me I can't build a big chest just from flat bench press and push-ups? Hold on, I'm refreshing the screen. I said I was going to do it and I didn't do it. Okay, 210 watching, 227 likes. Appreciate y'all, appreciate y'all. Wow. Scams prey on vulnerability, so true. Bitcoin scamming is also recession-proof because people need more money, so true. The dad in Matilda does come to mind with these MLM diehards. You mean Danny DeVito or like the character he played? Yeah. All right, well, that was good, and I don't want to keep this stream too long so that people can actually watch it back because Lord knows it was already uh, mind-melting enough with the current length. So appreciate you guys being here. Yesterday, we did a bonus stream. Arguably one of the funniest streams that we've ever done. Uh, thank you to Bad Dog Sports as well for that. We did a whole uh, improv scenario of if multi-level mar if the mob was an MLM. Extremely funny. And uh, on Friday I will be back with another stream. And uh, we out here. So I'll see you guys in the Discord. All right. Marco. Marco. Thank you guys. Marco. Peace out.